Hello and welcome to the studio Demands It, an exercise in creative thinking where we will conceptualize, pitch, and craft a film or series based on the demands or stipulations from one of you listeners acting as a hypothetical Hollywood overlord. Hypothetical! As professional screenwriters ourselves and massive cinephiles, we talk movies all the time. Movie. We'd like to believe that we can meet any demand thrown at us. We will be your screenwriters for this episode. I am T.C. DeWitt, and joining me, as always, is Jim Sportsman Berzelic. Hello, Jim. Hello. Welcome to the show. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Uh, sportsman. Did you play any sports growing up? Uh, technically, yes. Well, technically. Yes. I don't mean video games. I mean... Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, uh, so I was in uh, Cub Scouts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in Cub Scouts, I don't think we had them into Boy Scouts, but in Cub Scouts we had uh, sports leagues, hmm. sports teams, uh, and we'd face the other scout troops. And also in grade school we had sports teams that would face the other schools, and I was a part of those teams as well. Which sports, though? You're just saying sports yeah. teams. <laughs> yeah, we, ju- we just had sports. Did you show sports, the ball? Sports and, team. And, and some sort of implement to swing? Yeah, okay. sometimes, sometimes, depending yeah. on the ball. Uh, uh, no, what, uh, we had basketball, mm-hmm. we had softball. Mm-hmm. Those are the two I remember. I don't, oh, soccer. We uh, did, I, I did soccer for, for a season or two. Soccer was in, in elementary school. Every grade seemed to have their, like every, every two grades seemed to have their, their recess sport. Mm-hmm. And my brother is a couple years older than me. Football. They played football up and down the blacktop. That was their game. And my grade and the grade under me, we, soccer. Mm-hmm. But it was just like ball would roll to the fence, then everyone would just swarm around the ball. Kick, 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 kick. It would get loose. Everyone would swarm. To the, <laughs> no rules. Yeah. Just pure anarchy. Yeah. Uh, oh, actually, uh, that does remind me. Um, it wasn't organized. Uh, I would get together. There was a summer or two uh, uh, between middle school and high school where I'd get together with friends and we'd play. We'd play football. Um, uh, there, there are a few different fields we'd go to. So I have fond memories of the field outside the library. Yeah. And then, um, the year we stopped doing that was because, uh, they sold that field <gasps> outside the library to some condos or retirement home oh, or something. Sandlot got paved. It did. <laughs> uh, and, and my friends were like, oh, we're going to go to this park down the, down the street, this direction. And it it, it just wasn't the same for me. I mm. didn't want to like I think it was because my first impression when we went there it was Wilson Park. I think we went we went to Wilson Park, and everywhere was covered in goose crap. Uh-huh. And I'm like, and they're like, we'll just play touch then, where we so we won't tackle each other and fall down. I'm like, no, I don't even want to run through it. I don't want to do this. <laughs> the, and the, so I just went home and played video games. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna play Tecmo. <laughs> I, I football memory from youth. Remember uh, Halloween costumes. Like the, I remember my neighbor, best friend Tim Nelson next door, had a Joe Montana. I, I bet it was a Brett Favre uh, football uniform, mm-hmm. like a Halloween costume, helmet, all the gear. And you know how on those toy helmets they say, you know, "Not meant for real playing." Sure. Uh, they, they have a warning on there that mm-hmm. it's just a costume. Yeah. Well, we threw that gear on. We went in the backyard. Hut one, hut two, broke Tim's finger. Oh no. I, I like well. Oh, the, the thi- well, I mean, that would have happened in any outfit you were in. <laughs> yeah, we we creamed each other like we were wearing full football pads uh, and just oh, gotcha. Just broke his finger. Felt real bad about it. <laughs> I think I cried pretty, pretty uh, consistently for the rest of the day. <laughs> I'm imagining he he just sat there with his finger bent the wrong way, going, "TC, it's all right. It'll be okay. I'm not even feeling anything. <laughs> TC, oh my god. Okay, TC, you should go home." You should go home okay. and put some ice on it. Okay, I will. I'm going to go. I'm going to play another round or two. Okay. And I'm going to get this taken care of. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, I played baseball growing up, and I played CYC, played till I think it was 12, and then you, you age out of CYC, and then you have to go to Little League, mm-hmm. uh, Kiwanis Little League. And my first, I played one season of that, and I was like, I am out of my league. <laughs> It was fast pitch. They could throw curveballs. It was just as cool, as well as I played baseball when I played it, Mm -hmm. when I bumped up to, like, basically the the league meant for people who were like, I'm getting a sports scholarship. By the time I'm done with high school, I will get a baseball. Yeah. Yeah. First time that ball went zipping past me at the home plate, I was like, I think I'm done. (laughs) 
going to run. I'm going to be a runner like the rest of my family. <laughs> and that worked really well for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah baseball was, that was I, I played basketball as well, but that was one season, and that was also like, talk about the, we had, we, we, we lost a game 66 to nothing. So, wow. Yeah, that, uh, uh, granted, I was on teams that had people, in, in general, that had people uh, much better, so we never lost that badly. Yeah. But um, if it was a team of me's, it, it would have been that every game. <laughs> but um, there, there is something endearing about, like, misfit losers, like, just trying their best. Sure. And, and honestly, like, that, when I look at some of my favorite movies, when I look at, like, stuff we've created here, there, it's the uphill battle is just so much more interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, we want the rebellion versus the empire. Well, uh, I, I mean, everyone everyone thinks so. Uh, you know, everyone, everyone loves a good underdog, underdog story. What I'm reminded of in this conversation is the, uh, the, the, the TV show on Netflix, both of them, The Toys That Made Us mm-hmm. and The Movies That Made Us, yes. both of them. They're wonderfully told, and they do a great job of making these, these, these companies, these products, and these movies – Sound like oh, it was it was the the little engine that could, and it's <laughs> like when you really take a step back, you're like, these are big, big companies that, that like yeah, Steven Spielberg making Jurassic Park wasn't exactly an underdog story. Yeah, but you know, Pretty Woman was, and and you've talked sure, about yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not saying all the things that I'm, <laughs> but on there were a couple. Were, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but even even in yeah, film, television, everyone loves like watching the Scrappy Doo Gang. Defeat the no, not the Scrappy Doo game. No, no, not the Scrappy, the Scooby Doo no. game. Yes, yeah, minus Scrappy Doo. Yes, we're not doing that episode. We no. did that episode. We right? did. <laughs> well, we get in today's episode, <laughs> Jim. Our amazing listeners, you know, I asked you if we should get into it, and then I didn't let you answer. How about we get into the episode? Um. Well, it seems like you just want to do it. If oh, you, no, if I were to say I didn't want to, I want to keep talking about underdogs. Yeah. Uh, you, you're. <laughs> You're uninterested in that, so why don't we? Why don't we just get started? Oh, well, now I feel like you're being sarcastic, and you don't even want I'm to. I'm trying. I, I don't know. If, I don't yeah, know we're if starting at a real low point. I don't know if that bit worked. I, I was trying to do that like <laughs> overly aggressive, and now I just feel like a jerk. <laughs> well, see, now we've created an underdog story I, of whether or not this episode will. will so <laughs> now, now I want to start the episode just to just to cleanse uh, cleanse my palate of that that terrible bit that I just tried. Well, Jim, our amazing listeners have given us demands from studios literally all over the world. All over the world? All over the world. And you, you listening now, you can send us any demand you'd like, and we will have to meet your demands right here on the spot. And when we reach the end of the episode, if we've done our jobs, we will have pitched a full script and story meeting or even exceeding those demands. And last episode of the season, Jim, uh, not accounting our Zelda crossover, this is the last official episode of Mm -hmm. the season. When the end of the season comes, which is now, your demands could have helped us craft the script that will be greenlit by the fans for our finale, a full Ooh. production. Thank you to everyone who submitted. Thank you to everyone who submitted this year. We'll we'll do a, a, a full season recap, but all the other seasons, yeah. forget you. But no, keep, this season, thank you, and the future seasons to come. But thank you, everyone who who has sent. <laughs> yes, in. actually, thank you very uh, much. Uh, keep them coming. But today's demand. Okay, so we we selected the demand. I'm going to read it here for the first time fully. But uh, knowing the subject matter, mm-hmm. uh, we had six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, nine oh people had all submitted demands using the same topic. And uh, I'm going I'm going with this one specifically, but we'll we'll call out some of the other demands here, just skimming them if I find them apt or appropriate to what we're discussing mm-hmm. in the midst of the demand uh, response. Uh, I will I will give some call out here, but this specifically comes from at Lon Lon Loner uh, on the site formerly known as Twitter, <laughs> and studio name is I Always Wear My Stretchy Pants Studios. All right, Jim, we are allegedly still about two years away from seeing the MCU Fantastic Four movie. Plenty of time for the studio to figure out just what the hell they're doing with the universe at large and also how the first family fits into it. What do you all hope and wish for the newest FF? Obviously, we can sit here. Obviously, you can sit there and say anything is better than the previous versions, but what do you think the MCU needs to do with these iconic characters? The studio demands you pitch your Fantastic Four film, take into consideration all the currently released MCU films, and probably look at everything that will come out before 2025. And is, uh, also, give your Gambit a cameo. 
That, <laughs> that is my headcanon for the MCU X-Men. Oh, Clobbering no. time, boys. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lon Lon. Uh, Lon Lon Loner, thank you for, for tweeting that at us. And thank you for loving the Gambit episode. Yeah. Because that, that, is a, that is even an on-the-table option right now for what we'll, we'll put out there for potential finale fodder. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll see if we can figure out a Gambit camera. Yeah. But, uh, Fantastic Four, Jim. Here Fantastic we are. Fantastic Four, TC. Fantastic Four, Jim. Mm-hmm. This is fantastic for you. For me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So uh, MCU specific, this is so it's going to exist in the MCU. Yep. Uh, we have to take into consideration what's come and what's going to come out before. Um, oh, sorry. There's one more addendum here. Avenger Tower has become the Baxter Building. That's the last line from... Sorry, I almost missed that. Oh, okay. Line. Avengers Tower has become the Baxter Building. Uh, which makes sense because in Homecoming... They left Avengers Tower to move out to upstate New York, where Avengers Complex exists. From that point on, and that's when they sure. build the end, end game and whatnot. Right, because it stops being Stark's Tower, becomes Avengers Tower, mm-hmm. but that's a government agency, and so the government moves them out to a government compound. Yeah, uh, but okay, so fantastic. We we have discussed this time and time again for years now. What we would do, what we wouldn't do, what we would hope for. We, we've even done fan casting, and. I don't necessarily think necessarily think we need to sit here and do any casting per se. There are some excellent dream casts out there that people keep throwing out. There are names uh, just skimming the other Fantastic Four demands here. Some of these might actually be worth reading. There's there's a there's a key number that keeps popping up in is a it few. Four? Of these. Uh, there's oh. a, there's another key number. <laughs> oh, okay. Four is in all the demands, <laughs> but there's another number that's popped up a bunch of times uh, that that might be worth looking at. But um, yeah. Okay, so Fantastic Four. What's your love of these characters? What's your dislike? Um, so fanta- uh, growing up, Fantastic Four was in the same bucket as, as Avengers. A bunch of old, stale characters I don't care about. <laughs> right? Like through, pretty much through the 90s. That was my feeling mm-hmm. on them. Um, and then uh, uh, in, when was that? Uh, when did Civil War happen? Uh, that'd be like early 2000s, so like 2000, I'm going to guess 2003. Can I do Can I do it? Let's see. Civil, well, go ahead, keep talking. Uh, oh, um, no, I, I want to hear you, I want to hear you talk out your typing. I am it's, typing it, and it's... Uh, it's typed, and it is. No, um, okay, so um, that was when I got back into, uh, so I was very much into X-Men mm-hmm. uh, growing up, and uh, the rest of the Marvel Universe never really grabbed anything for me and then i stopped 2006 sorry to oh really that late okay so that all happened at the same time interesting um and i uh, uh and eventually comics just got too expensive and i quit x-men as well um at x-men 25 well wow, you specifically know when you dropped off wow. yeah uh, uh, uh i actually started dropping off before that but i i believe i i made the effort to get the books right up until that anniversary book because it had a, a, a foil cover. It didn't have a full foil cover. They put a, like a weird foil sticker on it, <laughs> I, if I remember right. Um, but it was the issue where Wolverine got his adamantium pulled out, and that felt huh. uh, meaningful, right? Because mm-hmm. it's like, oh, no, that's Wolverine. That's his whole deal. What's going to happen now? And it turns out it uh, like they turned it into a thing that happens regularly and that it doesn't matter. And, yeah. and it, Paul it, class. It, yeah. 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 Um, uh, uh, so then I, I dropped out of comics un, uh, basically until Civil War, um, in, in and I, I saw what happened in Civil War and I kind of got I got drawn back into Marvel Comics. It made me interested in all of the other titles, right? Like uh, I was like, oh, oh, this is who Captain America and Tony Stark are. Yeah, if, and and if I may, with Civil yeah. War, if you want to see one of the best crossover events that weaves in the entire mainline universe of a comic book company, the civ- the original Civil War run mm-hmm. is one of the best. Top top 10 easy, top five probably. Yeah. Uh, and and I, th- I thought it was going to... One of the reasons I got back into the comics then is because I thought it was a... Uh, I, I kept calling it a return to form, right? Mm-hmm. It, 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 it returned Marvel Comics to this thing that it used to be that, that made it really interesting. Uh, uh, the heroes 
were truly vigilantes, right? Like, J. Jonah Jameson had had been calling for Spider-Man's head for decades. Bring me the head of Spider-Man! But no one else cared. Everyone was like, no, Spidey's a good guy. Hey. Everyone knows him. Everyone keeps a secret. The guy with it's- six arms sounds hot. <laughs> and, um, and here came Civil War... And it was sort of this in-world reboot without doing what DC did, which was which was literally starting everything over. Mm-hmm. They said, OK, remember in the 60s when these heroes were, were like dangerous, where they did. We didn't know that they were heroes. And so the authorities treated them like just like the bad guys because mm-hmm. they were they were outlaws. I was super excited that that's what this was sort of a return to. Um, and it was that way for a few months. And then that event ended. And then we went into World War Hulk, and I'm like, okay, because yeah. and they they kind of maintained the the vigilantism, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but by by the end of World War Hulk, moving into Secret and in, Secret Invasion, uh, I think House of M came after. No, House of M was before before all, before Civil all War. of this. Wow, okay, whatever. Ha- the House next of M, event. I think, was like 2000. World after World War Hulk, moving into yeah, was, probably Secret Invasion. Secret it was, War. It was it was a scroll war. Yeah, is yeah. is what it was. Uh, they had they had dropped any of that. I also <laughs> didn't like how uh, World War Hulk. Basically, these events all suggested large, permanent um, mm, nope. I- events. Nope. Status and, quo must and be they, maintained, and, Jim. But the thing is, status quo came back so fast, it was like whiplash. The The only event that had any sort of long-lasting effect was House of M, and, and even that had started diminishing. Yeah. It was yeah. okay how that started diminishing, like the way powers were like... Kind, like slowly fading back it was more like a drip instead of just like and they're all back and they're all done yep so um and and, uh, uh, sorry i'm making this a real long story maybe we we should make this a whole separate episode we cut (laughs) or something but um at the same time uh uh, so that made me appreciate sort of the avengers and marvel in it at in 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 whole Mm -hmm. um that wasn't what made me uh, uh have an appreciation for fantastic four because I got back into Marvel Comics with Civil War, I then uh, I sought more. I wanted to find more, and um, I was introduced to the Ultimates. There you now, go. those had been out for several years, yeah. uh, which was great for me. That just meant I went to Barnes & Noble got and treated it like yeah. a library yeah, yeah. and just <laughs> read everything there. And it was through them, uh, it was through reading the larger Ultimate Universe that I read Ultimate Fantastic Four, which... Um, for me was the probably the best iteration of the Fantastic Four directly on the page. Now what I mean by that is there were two other incarnations of the Fantastic Four that I thought were great. One was a parody villain uh, version that you never really saw. They show, showed up for like a couple pages in Planetary. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they weren't called the Fantastic Four, but they were alluded to as the Four sure. that, uh, that travel dimensions and they're, they're terrible tyrants. Um, so that was that was a fun reference, <laughs> and the other was sixteen oh one. Brilliant. They were Neil um, Gaiman. Yep. Yeah, they they were referred to by everyone else in the setting as these grand explorers that that went off and got lost, discovering these these crazy, the crazy powers that be in the heavens and 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 beyond, um, and and uh, uh, that was an amazing use of the characters, and I, I think that was where. Yes, yep. Their elemental nature was first. I, I'm sure uh, yes. suggested. I, I'm sure a more uh, someone who's really, really into Fantastic Four, Randy Lander, genius that he is, he would be able to even correct us on anything we got wrong, Marvel wise. Mm-hmm. I believe that you're correct there. Yeah, that 1601 Neil Gaiman just associated the four to the four elements, mm-hmm. and like, wow, if that hadn't been done before, I'm not aware because that's so brilliant. Yeah, and Ultimates in conjunction with 1601 managed to utilize their powers in such a way uh, ultimates is where i ultimates is where i got fully introduced and ingrained into loving the fantastic four in that universe mm-hmm. um and mark wade who i follow d- I, whatever mark wade writes i'm gonna read it sure daredevil captain america he did a run on fantastic four with mike ringo one of my favorite artists of all time rest in peace and he did the 10 cent adventure that uh, DC and Marvel started putting out as sort of like starters sure. for people. I, Ten- I, I I did the the Batman Fugitive. Oh yeah, the five I, cent I, Fugitive. I loved, yeah. I loved that. Yeah, uh, that and it was always at the beginning of a run. And the Ten Cent Adventure of Fantastic Four, written by Mark Wade, drawn by Mark uh, Mike Ringo, was 
Reed Richards telling the entire history, the entire history of the Fantastic Four so coherently and so clearly, and you get on the last panel why it was done that way. He's telling it to his kids as they're going to sleep. Oh, sure. And it's like, oh, brilliant. Like, <laughs> they crammed into 22 pages the entire history of the Fantastic Four so perfectly that you could literally start the Fantastic Four there. And that was mainline 616 Fantastic Four. They are adults. They are a family. They have the two kids. Ultimates, they are 14 years old. 14, 15, 16 yeah. year old. Like, they are... They are it's sort of what they, well the they start there. They do they do fast they do forward well. pretty pretty fast. Yeah. They get to college pretty pretty quickly. Yeah. But but they were they were young. They were just starting out. Yeah. And it's sort of what fan four stick. It's unfortunate that you can identify the movie by its terrible yeah. title. We will keep doing that. Yeah. If you are confused, what we are saying when we say fan four stick, the latest Fantastic Four movie 2014? 15. 15? Yep. God, that's actually a long time ago now. <laughs> um, uh. uh, uh the advertising was Fantastic Four, and they put the four as the second A in the yeah, middle so of the word. Fant- so stick. if you read it out directly, yeah, yeah. it's fant- <laughs> fant- four stick. So. But the the Ultimates is also where you got on board with them. Is that what you're saying? Uh, that that's where I yeah that's that's where I I truly fell in love with like like the way that the Ultimate Fantastic Four was told mm-hmm. was so good. I loved everything. They they kind of did the element thing, which was my my favorite, but they didn't they. Uh, uh, Sort of, they sort of did that. They reinvented Doctor Doom there mm-hmm. um, as having a having an, an elemental power just like the four. Yeah. Um, it wasn't just a very arrogant man who who put a mask on. <laughs> like he literally was made of mag- magnetic metal. Yeah, they they gave him basically electrical powers. Yeah. to to coincide with with the the other four, mm-hmm. uh, made him a part of the accident that created them. Yeah. Again, Fan Forstick did. Which, kind of go well, in there. which was that was incorporated into even the the oh, previous right. yeah the, the previous, Tim Story uh, uh, duology movies. yeah uh, now the what we've talked about the MCU and aesthetically what they they seem to draw heavily from in from Iron Man on was mm-hmm. the Ultimate Universe yeah. a lot of the looks of the characters a lot of the the um, personalities of the characters were true mm-hmm. to the core of what those characters had always been. But it seemed that they drew a lot from the Ultimate Universe. Yeah. Which isn't to give Ultimate Universe all the credit, because Bendis, Millar, and uh, was it, did, uh, who did um, Fantastic Four? Not Warren Ellis. That was um I thought it was. Planetary. Uh, oh, oh, plan. Oh, uh, 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 Warren Ellis? I just said that. I think it is Warren Ellis. But anyway. Um, no, you said Bendis and Millar. Mellis, uh, Bendis, Millar, and Warren Ellis. Uh, they just took what the core of those characters were for mm-hmm. 30, 40, 50 years, and then reinvented them for, through a modern lens. So, and now that uh, to to give credit to that, it, um, it's not like all of these characters were invented with that sort of uh, laser focus on each of the characters. It was the decades that kind of focused those characters right. into being those things. Yes, yeah. Uh, just just want to give give that credit to to Bendis, Ellis, and Millar. Sure, uh, I, I absolutely. So taking all this into consideration, sort of where we're coming from, what we what drew us into them, what we loved about them, and knowing that the MCU did draw heavily from ba- basically our mm-hmm. point of reference is the Ultimate Universe. Um, not not to say I'm not familiar with the rest of the Fantastic Four history. I am. Uh, we're not coming in with just yeah. this information. However, integrating them into the MCU, th- there's a lot of difficulty in, in doing this because... They were originally the first family. They yeah. were the, the the comic book that started Marvel Comics. Mm-hmm. Jack Kirby, with the help of Stan Lee, created the Fantastic Four, put Timely Comics off the map and put Marvel squarely on the map, and everything that followed came from them. And we've seen iterations from them time and time again. For my money, the best iteration of them up to this point in film has been The Incredibles. Not the only person to feel that way. Um, in fact, one of our... Uh, one of our uh, dear listeners here said, uh, Tony, a lot of people just want it to be the Incredibles again. I partially agree, but it's also really like them to be explorers. The explorer aspect of F4 needs to be utilized and take it as an opportunity to make more practical sets. Sorry, that's more of a... <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> um, the, yeah, I, I love the Incredibles. They are the best Fantastic Four we've seen in cinema mm-hmm. thus far. Um, how would you bring them in 
Like, do, uh, do, do you want to uh, like I, I agree. I know uh, uh, to me, I, I, I know it. So I, uh, uh, I can just uh, uh, nod and agree. Uh, I, when I've tried explaining it to other people that, that The Incredibles is the best Fantastic oh, sure. Four movie yeah. that, that we have, like, I'll get quizzical looks and I try to be like, well, because they correlate. And they're like, no, there's no speedster in the Fantastic Four. It's like, no, yeah, but it's Johnny. <laughs> yeah, but it's still Johnny. Yeah, but but he doesn't fly and he's he's not the brother. Like, would you would you please quickly explain? Certainly, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the analog transfer one for one yeah the, he's not a hothead fire person and and johnny isn't a speedster but that hothead attitude the shot the the hot shot act before you think attitude of johnny storm is dash yeah uh, is dash par right mm-hmm. uh um uh, the the quiet invisible nature of the invisible woman is violet mm-hmm. the always flexible has a response has an answer to everything who better than a mother mm-hmm. to be able to literally bend herself into a pretzel to fix every problem mm-hmm. than Mrs. Incredible. And the brute force giant heart of the thing is Mr. Incredible. The rock and foundation of yeah, the family. Yeah. So it's, and, and even going even further, Jack, Jack is Franklin and Val- Valeria, mm-hmm. Valeria, the, the next generation Uber versions mm-hmm. of these powers. Um, and syndrome is, an obsessed hates the heroes for very ego driven reasons and is a tech based psychopath who tries to destroy them. Like he's doom. Like it's yeah. such a great, I, if Brad bird and the gang didn't do that on purpose, they, I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> and it's beautiful. It is, yeah. it is the best version of s- if, if and it, I, I think when you first told me about this, what really kind of uh, uh, also ends up sort of driving uh, th- that wink and nod home is uh, uh, the final the the uh, in, in the finale to show that they're continuing their adventures. Moment, moment, yeah, literally the moment drill up. Uh, the from, from underbiter. The, yeah, <laughs> and uh, mole men were the the original villain of the the Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four. Yeah, so it's uh, that's why I say it. I I know there's other people out there who said it too, but um, uh, yeah, it's. But now let's take that to the MCU. Why the Incredibles work so well as a Fantastic Four movie is because the heart of the movie is the family. Is mm-hmm. that they're in this together despite their familial issues, their fam- family problems and whatnot. That they're that they are stronger together like uh that um that, that that the heart of this is should be this this sweet sincerity it shouldn't just be punch zoom in uh, you know like uh, look at the fan four stick and the tim story too the tim story ones did a good job of they keep it light they keep it fun and they have their family problems but it's i don't know it still feels cute and not it mm-hmm. doesn't have sure. this like real genuine heartstrings being pulled kind of stuff that I think that, that the Incredibles crushes. Sure. Um, like, I can't do it without you. I can't do it. Without, I can't let you die again. Like, J- um, uh, Rob's, uh, uh, Robert's confession about, like, how broken he would be without his family. That Pixar moment. Oh, it shines. Sure. I love yeah. that movie. And I think that's, if the MCU could find a way to introduce these characters where we truly fall in love with this family and we root for them, Mm-hmm. That's that's the real trick. I mean, it's on us to do that right now. Sure, yeah. Um, but uh, uh, it, well, if you if you yeah, yeah. need a moment to think here, no, uh, uh, no if if you're ready to go, uh, I, I am I, I am ready to dig in. Okay, I, great. Because I, I I have a I have a couple different directions. Uh, one is looking at it from a, a larger. How do we fit it into the current MCU story? Mm-hmm. The, the the larger story, and the other was. Uh, the way I do a lot of shorthand is I go and I crib other things. <laughs> well, so, I crib away, my okay. friend. Like, my, my first thought is, well, I think the first fastest uh, uh, and, and easiest way to kind of get all of that mm-hmm. is to almost come at it from the other angle of uh, uh, they're already established. And uh, what we do is we essentially retell Lost in Space, mm. but with the Fantastic Four. Okay, We get them lost in... The cosmos, what ultimately will end up being the multiverse. The multiverse, yeah. Um, so we start the movie by saying, "Here we are, mid decades long adventure." Is that what you're suggesting? Po- e- either that, or we start like like it literally opens with them launching themselves into getting lost. Okay. Uh, 
this has been discussed before, and we actually have a few people on the list here who who've said it. Would I think you are a fan of the idea of putting them in the past, right? Um, I'm not a big fan of really? the the okay. period of the '60s. Okay, but that the more I think about it, the more that that works. That so what what really convinced me that that you can do something like that was X Men First Class, um, and I think you could do a lot. With um, uh, you, you could put them in that period. The thing is, I don't want to hang out in that period, right? Uh, or I guess if I do, at the very least, at the end, at the end of the movie, I would want them to get flung out of the period to join the contemporary MCU. I don't want to yes. sit. I don't want to sit in the past. You, you're, you're not alone in this thought. First, I just want to throw the, the just so we acknowledge it. In Doctor Strange two, when Reed Richards shows up, mm-hmm. played by John Krasinski. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch did say, didn't you guys chart in the 60s when Reed shows up? Yeah. Uh, so canonically then, if if we're if, unless, until the multiverse uh, phase tells us otherwise, we are mm-hmm. led to believe that that Doctor Strange is the Doctor Strange we've known for multiple movies at this mm-hmm. point. And so canonically he has stated that the, the, the Reed Richards and the Fantastic Four, or at least Reed Richards, yep. charted in the 60s. Yeah. Uh, some of our uh, listeners here. So Paula, uh, bah, 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 bah. Damon, uh, bah, 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 bah. and <laughs> sorry. There's... No, it's okay. I, I love that each person gets a little, <laughs> a little, a little, little trumpeting fanfare. after. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and Brian. Give him uh, the fanfare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all of them, uh, the three of them, all three said, that they think the movie should, uh, in one way or another, they should be from the 60s and or 70s and haven't been seen since. Sure. That they, so Brian specifically says, I'm sticking with the hope that they're a team that went into the negative, the negative zone in the 60s or 70s and haven't been seen since. They come back fully fleshed out. Superhero team and family, including Franklin and Val- Valeria. They, cool. uh, he wants all six, huh? Yep. They have bought the building in New York and are back r- running around fighting villains. Make it fun, colorful. Doom is still alive, though. Uh he goes on from there. So uh, I know that's been thrown around that people mm-hmm. say like, Oh, set the set. And we, yes, we do have the canonical statement of them being from the sixties. So your suggestion that we open the movie, that they're already lost in space. And I mean, the thing is I like, we could crib that real hard all the way to Dr. Smith can be Dr. Doom. <laughs> Just right? trying right? to, cause he's, he's traveling, he's traveling with them, but he's constantly trying to undermine them. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. But he needs them because they're continuing to travel to find their way home. With, but, uh, right, I not that I want to like, oh, there we go. <laughs> We're all done here. Um, that might not be the best place to start. It's just the the, the first the first blue sky thing. And, sure. and uh, we, we can throw that out right away if, if we want. I, I, I see the value in, in giving us a full on exploring the the cosmos and the the inner cosmos with this family to ground them to my my hope of falling in love with these characters and truly just believing they're the best oh mm-hmm. uh, having them on earth having them exist in our world quote unquote sure is is going to make that easier than if they're gallivanting around in some psychedelic like if the first time we met Ant-Man was in Quantum Mania as much as yeah. Paul Rudd is charming as much as those characters are, are are fun there is something disconnected so disconnected from our reality that it's hard to like I could run alongside that guy well apparently that was the case for a lot of people even <laughs> if it's even being the third movie yeah uh, also true so on one hand, I do like the idea that they're out there exploring, but on the other hand, having their home base just be having the thing walking down the street to grab a carton of milk. Hey, how's it going? Like, there, there's something that grounds them so much in our world that it, it might be easier for us to to see ourselves beside them. Does that make sense? Sort of. It, the, like, bringing up Ant-Man is, is I think, a good... Um comparison right like what makes ant-man so much fun uh, uh, I've, I've read a couple criticisms and and i understand where this comes from with ant-man it's oh his power is is shrinking and growing so we get to see the fun of things we recognize mm-hmm. being bigger or smaller um when you go in the quantum realm <laughs> yeah you don't know what size everything's supposed mm-hmm. to be um i don't necessarily agree with, with that uh, uh criticism of quantum mania i freaking loved quantum mania 
Um, but that's not what this episode's about. Um, <laughs> we could do it. We could do it. Talk about uh, later. To, to that to that end, though, just jumping out into the multiverse and being like, "Look at all this wacky stuff," and we are all so wacky. Like like that might not be the greatest way to start that. Like, okay, well, Rock Man, uh, uh, go with Fire Man to to uh, to to do this job while uh, I, Stretchy Guy, and uh, uh, Invis- Invis- Invisi Girl. Go and uh, uh, do this other thing. And, well, how about this? Uh, like that—that that already is so otherworldly. Yeah. That that um, I, I I I'm taking a long way to say I think you're right. We need to at least have a bit of time establishing that in 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 a recognizable world. Well, banana for scale, basically. Is, sure. Like, that's what banana I'm for scale. <laughs> well, how about this? Uh, uh, imagining starting out with them in some like. Uh, Actually, I'll crib from Star Trek Beyond. We open that movie with with Kirk in a, a, a trial arena, talking to some aliens, and like in the middle, just we just drop us in the middle of an adventure, and then they have to flee and they escape. Like, uh, okay, if if you don't recall it, Star Trek Beyond, yeah, yeah. it's great. It's great. <laughs> Starting this movie with with Ben and and Johnny, just full flung in the middle of an action sequence in some fantastical situations, situational world with Reed on the mic being like, what are you guys doing? And, and they're trying to solve something and the action, action, action. And they basically pop through a portal back into the lab. And we, we, we make their home base, the Baxter building, middle of New York city Mm -hmm. with mundane things to do outside the building. But their day to day job is, is (laughs) zipping through portals into. Yeah. I, I like actually, that's fun. I like that idea. And that way, it established they are exploring mm-hmm. uh, things from their building on their terms. Um, uh, and actually, I could go to Darren real quick. Focus on the fact that this is a family, and lean into them being explorers, not superheroes. So, if they are some sort of like uh, uh, um, ambassadors to these like far flung planets and dimensions, and that they keep popping through portals, but they have to come back home after work uh, and deal with, you know, sure, uh, Franklin's doing bad in school. That kind of thing, and oh, Johnny's got a date. Hmm. Uh, I a, a similar sure. vibe to Wandavision, where it's this super fantastic. Except, except not stuff. about grieving. Not about grieving. Yeah, so <laughs> we, we're not going to crush our souls with it. Um, but at least as like an opening of like big explode adventurous soul for it. Like so, we're going to we're going to do a No Way Home. We're going to jump right past origin stories. Like, how did you become a rock man? Homecoming. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah, 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 and Spider-Man: Homecoming. They just he he was already Spider-Man. I, I think yes. I I okay. think we skipped the origin. It, we can uh, reference we, it. We uh, do it. We do it as a as right the opening credit montage. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Classic Alex Ross or, paintings. <laughs> or after they come back, there's a tour going through the lower levels of the Bastion Building as they walk by, and that tour is getting right like a, a recording with, with like screens on the mm-hmm. wall mm-hmm. explaining that whole backstory to whatever tour is going through the building. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would love to do that uh, because it's sort of just like, let's get, let's not waste a half hour of this movie giving them their powers and then another 15, 20 minutes of them figuring out their powers and it takes till the end where they finally know how to use it that they can get team up and finally beat the bad guy. No, no, fully fledged, fully existing, fully understanding their abilities. However, mm-hmm. how does that integrate into the current MCU? That's, um, that's the only thing I'm pitching this and, and sure. I know the problem. It's, it's not that much of a problem though, uh, because the TV shows that have anything to do with that period, mm-hmm. um, are not Canon, right? Uh, shield and Peggy Carter, right? They're not, uh, uh, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're not Canon. So we can do whatever we want. Um, the, not, well, but the other question is, well, why haven't we heard of them? Where have they been? Things mm-hmm. like that. Well, I think I actually, like the idea of right so we actually i think establishing that they go through portals every day like it's a it's it's a work a day thing for them it's just what they do mm-hmm. that's their job go out find stuff or not bring it back things like that read i think i think a part of what would happen a part of the uh, the the impetus of where this goes is maybe so maybe what happens is this is Reed discovering the ne- negative zone. They've already discovered uh, other realities and, and pocket dimensions and stuff like that. Yeah. But this is he's discovering the negative zone uh, and going there because uh, I, I actually like the idea that 
Reed Reed's discovered a lot of this stuff, and he hasn't necessarily he just hasn't told anyone because, uh, uh, like for example, uh, uh, maybe this undermines Pym a whole bunch. Mm-hmm. But I like the idea that Reed discovered the quantum realm long time ago, and but but it's not interesting to him. He He's just didn't finding, do anything. <laughs> like 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 he almost flippantly mentions uh, uh, there are there are realities with. That, that are peopled by civilizations in every aspect and way we think of reality, mm-hmm. right? Like uh, 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 in, in the smallest space, there is, the, there is full worlds. And in the largest, uh, 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 and, and in our largest scale, it is merely a speck in the eye of, a, a, of, of well, I'm, I'm thinking Bahamut, but like <laughs> in the eye of a being, yeah. right? He's so um, like underwhelmed by it. Yeah. What? That, and that and, speaks to Reed's character. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and he does and like, like all the way, uh, all the way to like, uh, um, right. There's, there's, there's creatures in light there. There are, uh, uh, uh there are beings in dark, like the absence of light. Mm-hmm. And, and so like literally he, 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 takes a couple minutes to explain that there's literally things to explore everywhere and in everything mm-hmm. uh, and in any way you can think about a thing it can be turned over and plumbed and explored mm-hmm. and um, he has found this place called the negative zone it's the inverse of our reality uh, but it's not like a like a, a, a Ben could even be like, you mean like a bizarro world? <laughs> yeah. No, not, no, Ben. No, it's ben, not ben. a bizarro world. It, it's it's sort of think think of our reality as uh, as a photo, and it's it's the negative of it. Mm-hmm. Well, what does that mean? Does that that mean there are version like backwards versions of us there? Probably not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna go explore. We're gonna go find out, and that's they go do that, and they get lost and stuck there. Um. For, yeah, so that that could be the meat of the movie, is what you're suggesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah that 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 that's stuck that, in the... uh, uh, or or maybe they don't get stuck there right away, but they get they get sucked there, mm-hmm. the four of them. And what I'm thinking, uh, the way this plugs into the larger Marvel universe, mm-hmm. where have they been? Why? Like like, where was their impact? Stuff like that. Um, uh, uh, like we can establish, uh, I, through maybe through shorthand, basically suggest that all a lot of this oh. stuff. Was uh, like propri- like proprietary to Richards, mm-hmm. and when they disappear, because I I'm imagining they disappear and they don't reappear until later, and this is how the Baxter Building is it becomes the Stark Tower. The Stark Towers <laughs> is Stark Tower was Baxter Building. Oh, it just reverts. It back. started as Baxter oh, Building. The okay. R- uh, Richards disappeared. Stark, knowing the things that happened there and the things that were there, kind of took it over, and um, because uh, because Stark is. He, uh, I think Howard Stark is a bit of a unsung hero of the the Marvel, especially the legacy Marvel universe. Yeah. Um, because uh, uh, he's sort of he hasn't he isn't just a, a a weapons manufacturer. If you count Shield and Peggy Carter, he's done much more. Oh yeah. Um, but having having this guy like he helped create Captain America for crying out loud. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like yeah. so so him knowing the Richards, like I'm just gonna. I'm going to mothball this. Sure. I'm just sure. going to put this in, in stark uh, 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 freeze mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. now um, and, and, and kind of build around it. And, and now that Stark is done with the tower. And I would I would uh, I don't know if I would have it happen at the end of this movie. Yeah, probably. They basically pop it back into reality and they're like, well, that's that's our building. Technically, we own the deed to it, like like yeah. that kind of thing. And we were moving back in. Yeah, that that is is sort of how I do that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, sorry, I'm 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 scattered all over the place. Uh, uh, going back to so so that that sort of does, does that work? Does that make sense? So like it's going to be the negative zone that ends up really throwing them for a loop and sucking them out of like because because been... what we can say is time and space don't work the same in the negative right. zone. Right, well, same as the quantum realm. Like, yeah. we've, Ant-Man's already established you can go in and come out, and it's like days or years have gone mm-hmm. by. Uh, so you're you're leaning into, they existed in the 60s or 70s. They were ambassadors to our reality, to other realities. Reed was obsessed with the negative zone. They get sucked in. Portal shuts. 
and they've been Ruh-roh. and now they are they are they are stuck in the negative zone for an adventure and then they return to our reality caught up to modern day yeah skipping over everything yep. so then there's no contrivance as to why they didn't participate in all the events we yeah. don't have an eternal situation correct okay i that is cuz i have i have a few other ideas that uh, of of what happens while they're in the negative zone we'll definitely need to discuss that but i want to okay. voice this that is probably the best way to go for the pedantic people that don't like retconning. Sure. I'm, I'm not a big fan of retconning. Right. And I, I, I'm, I'm more on board with this than not. I'm going to offer a contrivance for why they did exist this entire time and didn't participate. It's because they are not... Uh, it, this doesn't work because you have a thing and a human torch and they yeah. should be out there punching and kicking things. Mm-hmm. But to suggest that they are explorers and they don't and they've just been here. I even say it out loud, it just doesn't work. I, we have to get, if we're going to create these characters that they existed in the past, and now they're here now, we have to get rid of them for f- 60 years or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's just the best way to do it. And th- the alternative that just breaks Actually, even better so than much. just Howard Stark decides, like, oh, they're gone, I'm going to do this. Like, literally even have a line or two, like, Richards and Howard Stark are friends. Oh, hey, let's let's get... Uh, John Slatterly in again yeah. or or Dominic Cooper yeah. to get him in again and have a scene with whoever casts as Reed Richards yeah. to give and, your whole opening before and that. And we yeah. can also use that to establish how, because uh, Richards doesn't want to be controlled or, or, or have the government yeah. Uh, yeah, just like so, just like Hank Pym is like, yeah. absolutely not. This is mine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ooh, we could even have a very young Hank Pym as like either an intern or, or, or mm-hmm. I, I don't know, just another another uh, character cameo kind of thing sure, sure. to show that all of these scientists did know each other, yeah. uh, but it, but like yeah, that would that would make sense. Re- Richards, Richards, and the, and the, the small group of, of oh, scientists man. they all agree. Yeah, no, having interference from people who don't get science mm-hmm. um, is a bad idea. And so Richards has managed to kind of insulate, which is why they they don't have soldiers going with them into all of these. Other dimensions, which is why they, they like they have these lockdowns in the tower. Like, no, if thing if something comes through, it can't get out into the he, greater New York area. Reed literally creates a failsafe for all his technology. Yeah, where as soon as he is gone, everything shuts down. Oh, sure. Like they there literally like. Oh, uh, that. Oh, that's great. Even if Shield is like. Well, use his shit, and mm-hmm. Stark is gonna be like, I can't. We <laughs> literally can't turn it on. Yeah. Well, then get rid of it. And then he yeah. just mothballs all, so that when they do come back, everything reactivating. Yeah. yeah, that like that's Herbie funny. the robot turns back on. Yeah. Like, yeah, welcome home, Mister Richards. Yeah. yeah, that's that's fun. Like he's such a. I like Reed being like the super particular. Like he's the smartest guy in the room. Like yeah. the, we've had geniuses. Reed Richards is the. Genius of all geniuses mm-hmm. in the MCU, and he should be. Mm-hmm. Um, so now that being said, I think we need to like because we we have we have off, off mic we've come we we've talked we've talked about Fantastic Four before because we're big old geeks, mm-hmm. uh, and um, we've talked about like some of the stories, some of the plots that they use that we're not big fans of. Like for example, Reed being a a. a like a bad uh, husband. Yeah, I do not that, like yeah, it. Just a bad husband. Neither do I. But I think we need to lean into he he in 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 the beginning at least for for our, our setup he is kind of neglectful. Yeah, I I don't. He, he's a yeah. he's a workaholic who he's it, the thing is I don't it, and may, maybe it doesn't make it personal enough to sue particularly, but I think he's that way with all three of them. I yeah. and and I think I think the place where that neglect should come from is because it, it it's. Because of the way he's so focused oh, on things, dude. he doesn't pick up on subtlety. So when, so when, when he asks, or when, when someone asks, "Hey, how how are you?" and mm-hmm. you go, "Oh, I'm fine," mm-hmm. like you go, "No, you don't sound fine. Why don't, you, why don't you? Richard does he? Oh, you're fine. Okay, cool Good for you. Yeah, because he feel if there's something wrong, you mm-hmm. will let me know, and I will fix it. What Spider-Man: Homecoming did so well was they they created this uh, the Spider-Man persona without doing the origin. The origin did exist in some capacity, but they, they sure. be, were able to create Spider-Man more or less properly without doing the origin mm-hmm. and still give him the the weight of being Spider-Man. Sure. 
I, I, I know uh, uh, an individual or two that don't that, yes, that think we needed I that know. origin. I get it. Um, I don't agree with that. I don't so agree. basically, uh, one reason I'm bringing that up is because I think we're very clearly skipping the yes. origin, and I I know there will be people annoyed by that. That's fine. Be annoyed. We'll get it in, in a conversation <laughs> in the lobby. Here's the thing: Reed's uh, sort of uh, like the thing that drives him is he screwed up by giving his best friend hurting his wife and hurting his mm-hmm. brother-in-law and giving them their powers and he's obsessed with discovering a way to to, to I, fix that i love that i love yes. that aspect of richards so by skipping the origin there's a risk of losing that that element or at least motivating that clearly on the screen yeah however if reed's neglect or his his myopic look at life or just his fo- his deep focus is the reason they get lost in the negative universe mm-hmm. we've now put it back on the table that he carries this guilt with him that he's forever trying to make up for sure so if we see read the sort of like yeah mm-hmm, you're fine you said you're fine that read at the beginning they get flung into the negative uh negative zone and then now he has that guilt and that's what he's trying to make up for and now we, we've we've established the same thing the origin would have done you see what I mean? Like Reed is, of, yeah. Reed is carrying this guilt with him that he abandoned them so far from everything. They, uh, uh, ben was engaged to you know Alicia. Uh, Johnny oh, had, sure. yeah, like all I, these I things. Might, I, might, I might even uh, uh, put my finger on it more, uh, right? So that, that whole opening establish, uh, establish they've, done, they've been doing this for a while. So it's not that, it, it's not that exploring other worlds is humdrum, mm-hmm. but it's just that's their daily life. Yeah. Um, and they're they're minor celebrities as well, um, but they they don't necessarily care for that. And Richards is neglectful, right? To to all to I bit my tongue. Oh no! Uh, to all to all three of them. Yeah. Um, they get flung into the the negative negative zone. The they they have some some turmoil, and Richards sort of has he has a moment. He has sort of a breakdown moment where he says. I'm where, where he's like I'm. I'm so sorry. I've done it again. Yeah, I've ruined yeah, our lives yeah. again. And and uh, uh, like like he goes into the how he 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 basically exposits how the origin he messed up their lives mm-hmm. and here he is doing it again. And he just all he does he like every like I think it would actually be interesting if there was a way to suggest that him going to other universes is his equivalent of digging the grave deeper. He, he, j- he wants to fix it, and he's looking for any, like, that's one of the w- reasons he's exploring is he's looking for the Band-Aid to fix what he's done. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's just, that's never where it's going to be. Um, and and the family because you need to look inside. Yeah, it starts that, in the and, inside, and, and, and that's not where he ever looks. Now, one of the reasons I want uh, that I really like going this direction, I want to throw out a, a, a thing that I want to have happen in the negative zone. I think if uh, 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 and it touches into what's happening with Kang in the multiverse, and I mm, think okay, yeah. I think they're still going to lean into that being the new big bad. I don't really. I I, I know there's there's suggested been a stall and pivoting because of the 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 jonathan majors majors i always want to say winters and i know that that's the <laughs> love to see jonathan winters as king back in the uh, 60s he would have crushed uh, it yeah he would have uh jonathan majors as as uh, as king i know there was a because of his his controversy mm-hmm. uh thing there's there's been suggestion that everything's gonna pivot mm-hmm um, but I think leaning into Kang, like I think Kang is where, where this leans into. And I like the idea of in the negative zone, one of the things they discover early, maybe this is the thing that makes Reed finally break because he doesn't see what's what's going to, like they're, they're looking around and stuff. He, he's the one who finds four empty Fantastic Four costumes with like dust and stuff. Like, oh, we've been here or versions of us have been here and didn't make it out. Yeah. Did I just kill us? Yeah. Is this some um, sort of causality loop and are we going to come back and this is where we die? Yeah. And what we find out is that other, that this negative zone, maybe there are other negative zones, one, one per parallel, but for whatever reason, this negative zone is a negative zone that other fantastic fours I, end up visiting. I like that. It's the only, there is no multiversal negative zone. There's one negative. zone. So this is the space between multiverses. Yes. Yeah. This is the space that we saw the Watcher in What If? In? Yeah, sure. That's, Ooh. yeah. And the Watcher, Uatu the Watcher is connected to the Fantastic Four canonically in the comics. So we could put him the in The ultimate nullifier to defeat Galactus came from Uatu. Yeah. Yeah. 
Mm, so okay, the negative, there, there might be something there. Negative well. zone is the one and only. So, yeah, finding other Fantastic Four outfits. Were they destroyed by Kang? Is that what your suggestion? Uh, not, not necessarily. Ultimately, what I wanted to do was I wanted to, like, read, like, something happens, read uh, is trying to reach out. Like, I want to I want to allude to um, the, the there. I don't know if it was just one Fantastic Four story where Reed basically has an adventure with a bunch of other Reeds. Yeah, the, actually, the Ultimate Universe started this and then oh, is, it, it is culmin- that culminated in 616. Okay, because uh, I remember it, reading the 616 one. I did also read an, the Ultimate one. I, I loved how they crossed over yeah, the, the things there. This actually is starting to lead into where we need to focus in. If we're going to spend this entire adventure in the negative zone, Exploring, we a need a villain. Of, a lot of it, they could they could find ways out, but they keep finding this isn't our home. Right. So we're gonna do a little Sli- bit of sliders. A little bit here. of sliders. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, That's fine. So they have to keep coming back here to try to find, get back. Find it. And but then there lies a the question of the like, villain, and I feel like you're leading up to telling me who the villains. I, I'm be. not actually. Oh, good. I have uh, I have a suggestion. Uh, 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 I want to. I, I sort of want to get to the stinger. Uh, the, okay. The, you want to get to the end of the credits? Ca- kind of, yeah. Okay, the, fine. Go the, ahead. Well, because it's it's the way it plugs <laughs> into the larger MCU. Yeah. Uh, uh, so the making it the multiverse thing, having other Richards show up, but also having other of the other Fantastic Fours show up. Yeah. Even, for even the record, alternate versions of them, yeah. we can allude to other Fantastic Four adventures, like where they switch powers. Yeah. Um, I just want to state yeah. real quick: Sue's the leader of this gang, by the way. Like Reed might be the brain. And the the man behind the madness, but the, when they get in, like when it comes to action, I feel like Sue's up front leading Johnny and thing, and like orchestrating the the battle plans here. Okay, I uh, just wanted to put that on the table that I think she, while Reed gets lost in his own head, the rest of them are people of action. Sue is the is the one who can lead them. Okay, um, I I don't have a problem with that. Essentially, I feel like what I what what to me what the message of the movie is, and I like I want someone to say it. At sort of that that third act uh, 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 uplifting moment, because they keep running to versions of themselves, mm-hmm. um, and whether they're able to help each other or 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 like it turns out they they turn on each other, or whatever. I want uh, and it should probably just come back to this same one, but I I, I feel like the line "family helps family." Yeah. Um, and the the reason for that, right? It starts with them already kind of not being on the greatest of terms with each other, and then they kind of reach this zenith of, we're stuck here now, mm-hmm. but ultimately they need to come together to to get out of this. They have to they have to work together um, to to get out. And, and whether, I don't know, like... like I, I have does, a... Does that make sense? It, does, does that sound like a good theme, a good... Yes. Okay. It does. And I have a suggestion. We can hone in on an actual villain here. Okay. But we're going to take a break real quick. You cool uh, with it? Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 no, I wanted to get to, to my stinger point. First. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> by referencing all of these other universes and all of these other Fantastic Fours, yeah. uh, I don't know how to necessarily do it, but I want in our movie, whether it's in the stinger or just before, I want like like maybe our Richards uh, uh, or, or all four of them, they see in the multiverse, they see how so many different worlds extrapolate out and they see their futures many different versions and variations and they they see that it extends even further than they can see it extends hundreds thousands of years in the future and they're like wow that's that's great and then they they leave and then we come uh, uh, our narrative shows that Kang is definitively in the MCU the descendant of Reed Richards and thus we saw all the variations of the Fantastic Four leading to all the variations of Kang that that works no that was that was what I wanted to get to before the break that's who they fight excellent um that's I'll I'll, I'll pitch that but you're right so canonically in the comics Kang is the great descendant of Reed Richards yeah and yeah that's awesome like to 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 not have any Kang referencing or whatnot in the movie that it's about the Fantastic Four on this adventure but then like how does this tie into the whole thing oh shit yeah yeah all right well I have a villain suggestion I'll come back to it in a minute here after we take this quick break from uh, and hear from Six Five Media all right And we're back. Hello. Got, Hello. Got some water over there with some fancy I ice. I did. Uh, okay, so, villain time. Because, uh, 
a, a movie like this is only going to be as strong as its villain. We, mm-hmm. And we need someone for them to punch and fight. Fight, fight, fight. Uh, it just occurred to me, based off what we just said, I mean, we could lean into the whole the whole family thing. And Kang, I know this isn't where you're going, but I'll, I'll, I'll say anyway, Kang could be the villain here. I don't I don't want to make Kang the villain again. I think okay. they, they, they already tipped that card in Quantum Mania, and they only can use him one more time. I think it's going to be in the Kang Dynasty. We'll see what Loki okay. Season 2 does with it. But he is not... I, I just don't think it's smart to overuse him as the bad in multiple movies. I based sort of based on right seeing the 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 Loki and then seeing uh, uh, Quantum Mania. Um, I got the feeling. I, I guess the re- the other movies didn't really uh, uh, go this way, so that, I guess that's good. For whatever reason, because Thanos was was kept from being in, like he was just like little stingers here and there yeah. until Infinity War. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, I felt like they might go because Kang because there are many of Kang. I thought they might go the opposite. We're like, oh, he's going to be the bad guy at the end of everyone. every movie. Well, and then they have to fight. Everyone has to get together to fight the one one singular most powerful one. Possibly. And maybe um, that's the way to go. But here's... here's a, I, saying it out loud, thinking about it, it's prob- it probably... Unless you make the Kangs way different from each other, yeah. which they haven't... Well, I guess they haven't not done that yet. The, the one who survived but, in Loki. The yeah, one but at the he end. didn't. He was just he was a smiley dude who and didn't talk do lot. anything. Yeah. <laughs> and then this one who was blasty powers with an army. Mm-hmm. Um, they showed us a bunch of other other ones, but uh, who knows? Yeah. So anyway. here's, here's my suggestion. So being stuck in uh, being obsessed with the negative zone uh, and understanding multiverse theory, mm-hmm. I think Reed has has even gotten in touch with alternate versions of Reed. We can get another John Krasinski cameo sure. even <laughs> in, our, in our opening act before we lose them. All, all the fun fan castings that everyone's wanted. We yeah. can get all of them in there. Yeah, you, you <laughs> and Grumfeld or whatever his name is. We can get Miles Teller back. But, but like, the multiverse exists, whatever. When, uh, yes, Reed would be smart enough to understand this. Getting lost in the, the negative zone, and even before that, there could be an element of Reed wanting to find his equal like his true intellectual equal uh in in so much as being stuck in the negative zone the only way they're going to be able to get out is he he, his plan is i need to reach out to the other reeds and there Mm. are there's going to be forces within this zone that are going to try to stop us natural forces and literal beings that are going to f- to fight us every step of the way because this is a bad place. It's hell. We're we're in a <laughs> hell universe, and Reed is building things and reaching out to those like multiversal connections to try to to help me. I'm stuck in the negative zone. I'm the only Reed that found the negative zone. Help me, help me. And was, actually, was the the space where Loki was beyond the 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 destroyer thing was that supposed to be the negative zone? Uh, I thought that was like the end of it, end of time. Okay, like, may, we'd have to go well, back. Well, because because like th- there was uh, uh, leftovers of every multiverse right. of the multiverse was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maybe I, I, might, I might be free. Anyway, eventually, Reed like getting a machine to work where he contacts his like a Reed who can help him. Sure. And so now he has like we need to get from here to here, road trip across this weird plane of existence to get to this place. Family drama can exist mm-hmm. between these characters, and we can go into a little more detail on what all the characters are doing. We're basically discussing sure. plot here. Get him to the gateway or the space that they can then, if we can crack the negative zone open here with my counterpart on the other side, we will have access back to our world. Great. I'm drawing from the comics on this. Okay. Reed gets his counterpart to help him get to this point. And when he finally cracks it open, that Reed comes through, and it's zombie Reed you, Richards. You, you wanna I want to reference the zombie on, verse? I want full-on evil Reed Richards to have broken through. That, that, okay. the, that the Reed Richards that he thought he was talking to all the time, the one that's going to help him get to the MCU proper, is, a, is, an, is evil. Okay. It's just evil Reed Richards. Because now we have a villain to threaten our world okay. and punch. Because they have referenced the zombie verse in What If... Mm-hmm. But they didn't mention the Fantastic Four at all mm-hmm. from that from that one. Uh, okay, yeah. I, I my the 
if we're going to break this into three acts, act one gets us into the negative verse, negative verse, negative zone gets us to evil read, evil read. It's now a battle to is, stop him from getting to the 616. Is it maybe, I know that's not the number. <laughs> Sorry. Is it maybe, it's evil, is it, evil read is the one who reaches out to our read. Like, oh, and they're, sure. they're in the negative zone. He doesn't know what to do. And he gets, he hears this, this signal. Hey, read. Read, I can help I you. I can help, yeah. yeah. The only um, other read in all the multiverse who found the negative zone. Yeah, well, but it makes sense because that read, just even despite being a zombie, is still going to be very smart. Depend. I don't know. I don't remember if the the what if zombie verse follows all the same rules as the it does the, the the Marvel zombies print. It did not. Yeah. Um, and the Marvel zombie print, we've seen multiple versions of that universe. Oh, anyway. have we? I don't I believe it's been one singular one. Oh, I thought it was. Um, well, e- either way. Well, not either way, but uh, I was going to suggest that the read from that universe, uh, the reason it knows about the negative zone and knows the travel here is not just because he's a Richards, but because he saw the heroes of What If Uh-oh. enter that world and then come to, to the, the in-between place with the Watcher and, and all that stuff. They used Scarlet Witch. So he's uh, been the, the trying Scarlet Witch to get stuff. through. Yeah. He's like, I want to go to the place that can get everywhere. Yeah. So... So a nice little connection to the What If series. So mm-hmm. the, so uh, for those who might be uninformed, what I'm suggesting here is that there is an alternate reality within the MCU that we've already been witness to in the What If cartoon series. Very good. You should watch it on Disney+. Plus. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are not a sponsor. <laughs> uh, he is as smart as Reed Richards and also undead. Yeah. <laughs> like he has the, the drive and motivation of a brain eating, flesh eating zombie, Reed Richards. Yeah. And he's a genius. Mm-hmm. And in the comics, this happened. Yeah. <laughs> that, that ultimate Reed Richards finally found his intellectual equal. And they were it, talking. They were, and they they were, were buddies. Inter- interdimensional pen pals. He catfished him so hard. He did. <laughs> and he got him to open a portal. And then Because got them, he couldn't do it himself. Right. And so that's what I'm suggesting is that. While this Reed Richards has been able to reach into the negative zone, he has not figured out how to open it. But there's yeah. a Reed Richards in the negative zone who does know how to open it. Yeah. So if they work together to open the portal back, basically two portals at once, yeah. then now we have, our final, we have a final battle, or at least a setup for a finale or a climactic showdown, which is these Fantastic Four versus evil Reed and whoever he, we want to fight with him. So that is true. Now, the way that gets resolved in the ultimate, uh, ultimate Fantastic Four involves the fifth character um, that I wanted to avoid. I know a lot uh, of people probably we want we him to be... We haven't uttered his name yet, have we? We have, we have not. <laughs> um, uh, I am also avoiding him. Uh, uh, but the thing is, he and his powers are integral to solving the zombie Fantastic Four problem. Yes. How do we solve it? Go ahead. Oh, you, you say can, what it, yeah. Okay, so in Ulti- Ultimate Fantastic Four, Doom is the fifth. Mm-hmm. Um, and because of his electric power and the way his, his form now exists, consists, mm-hmm. uh, the, the zombies, like, what, oh, what are they? They essentially alluded to it being an almost, like, Phoenix-like force yeah, like that a, sought out life force. Yeah, it's not and, just a, a, an undead paranormal thing. It's literally like an alien virus. Yeah, and um, Richards, Reed Richards convinces uh, uh, Victor Von Doom that, uh, uh, of, of he, he explains, well, you are the most powerful life force that exists. And he's like, of course I am. I am doomed. And so he says, <laughs> you're the one who has to do this. And he's like, all right, Richards, <laughs> I'll save Earth again. <laughs> and, uh, and so he takes the being into himself. And um, like, it's then he realizes Richards has tricked him. Yeah. Uh, and they the, like, so yes, the being is in him. But to actually save the world, he now has to step back into the zombie verse and and let the portal close and he's yeah. like ah richard richard yeah and and the, the portal closes i don't want to do that yeah but here's what i do want to do with your stinger where we get to see the the multiverse sort of unfold before us mm-hmm. through time and we get to kang and we see that kang is a richards mm-hmm. i would then pull back from there and a third person has discovered the negative zone and i'd introduce at least just the idea of doom in the final moment because the reason i don't want to use doom here is because Doctor Doom is the greatest Marvel villain. I'll fight anyone <laughs> he is, on this. I, he 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 is. He's the Joker. 
he is, of the Marvel universe. He is Lex Luthor. He is everything. Yeah, like, well, the, and, yeah the reason I say Joker is yeah. when you talk about DC, Joker, e- yeah. even as, as great as Lex Luthor can be, mm-hmm. Joker is is the, the ultimate yeah. guy. So I, I when, when the MCU gets to it, Doom is beyond Thanos. He is beyond Kang. Doom is Doom is Doom, and to I don't want to bring him in too early. I don't want to bring him in incorrectly because I I also think I think Marvel has a plan for for Doom. I think he's going to be introduced. I I, I have a feeling not not because uh, uh, we're we have we had Secret Invasion. We're we're gonna get a Secret War, right? Yep, Secret War, uh, Kang Dynasty, and then Secret War. And. I mean, they might just they might just be using that name to allude to things like they did with Civil War. There's lots of things that happened in comic Civil War that the characters <laughs> that did not happen in uh, the movie. Mm-hmm. So they might be doing the same thing there. But if they're not, if they're uh, a Secret War is where Doom plays a big part. Oh yeah, it's Lord God Doom. Like yeah. he he literally solves their crisis on infinite Earths. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, so so I have a feeling they have a plan to introduce him and also introducing him separate from the Fantastic Four. Because um, he wasn't initially a Fantastic Four villain, right? Oh, I, I oh, can't. Maybe I, he was, but he also, he wasn't like, the. it was the Ultimate Universe that made him intrinsic to the Fantastic Four's origin. Yes. That made him so tied to them. Yeah. Um, uh, he is originally a Fantastic yes, Four okay. villain, just to be clear. Um, and, and, and that is okay, and that is fun, uh, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Because I, I almost feel like when you do that, it has to be the Fantastic Four that defeat him, um, which I don't know. Maybe that's the case. I don't know. Be, I guess what I'm saying is he's a bigger villain than uh, to the Marvel universe. Yes. Than just the Fantastic Four, it would be like yeah. introducing Magneto. No. Uh, In a Gambit movie. Kind of. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, I don't well, know what I'm listen, trying to say. He's I don't he's want big to. and important, and he's not just a uh, uh, a throwaway tertiary yeah. character in the grand scheme of the MCU. Yes. He deserves the royal treatment. He's literally the king of Latveria. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why we're, we've listed Doom. We've discussed Doom. Doom's off the table. Yeah. If you like my stinger idea to add on top of your stinger, fine. But I'm, I I think Doom is deserving of Thanos treatment of like, we need to introduce this guy proper. Mm-hmm. I literally, I would literally do a Doom focused movie like Thanos was the focus in Infinity War. Sure. But that's neither here nor there. I'm suggesting we get Evil Reed. I'm suggesting we we have these characters have a, a oh, throwdown no. battle with him. I I agree, but we just did the uh, the the Marvel trope uh, 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 fighting fighting your. Uh, do, do, uh, it's a mirror match. Yes, Fight, fighting the the, the Here, same power set. Here's what I'm going to stop you on that though. Uh, we've 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 built this movie around Reed Richards. I'm okay with him being the center of the family. We should discuss the other three and their journeys through this. And to, to sort of counteract the, at least remedy the, just the mirror fight, mm-hmm. I think Evil Reed's Fantastic Four, it's Reed Richards and three others. We don't have an evil Sue, Ben, and Johnny. I think we can, we can cameo. Hell, we can bring Jeremy Renner back to play evil Hawkeye. No, he doesn't want to do that. But you see what I'm saying? Like, his three others are not the thing and Johnny they, and Sue. They should be. Uh, like, because I think it, it it even it even feeds into our theme. His family, the doesn't family have... that feeds together, or fights together, feeds together. <laughs> no, feeds together, reads together. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I I yes, but I I would argue for the fact that his family doesn't have to be those, or that they don't have the same powers. Like, I I'm yes, a mirror fight is the is sort of a trope of the MCU. My suggestion would give you an opportunity to fight three other characters who don't have the exact same power set as the three other characters. Mm. But that's not here today. Let's talk about our heroes. Okay. Ben, uh, Johnny, and Sue. Yep. I suggested Sue should be the leader of this of this mm-hmm. group. Okay. Um, I think she's like has the ability to be the most level-headed one and to to see them through this. While while Reed is the mastermind and can build their stuff and and plan out their stuff. She's the one that takes control of situations, and this is in the comics. I'm not. I'm not just like picking this out of the blue. Uh, Sue has been the leader of the Fantastic Four multiple times. What is your hesitation on this? Um, I'm. I'm. I'm I, I. I don't have a hesitation. Sorry. I, I know I have the look of it. I, <laughs> I, my my thinking look is is very much a oh he's upset 
type, <laughs> type look. It's uh, it, it it's not. Um, I'm I'm rolling it around. Okay. So uh, with that said, I would uh, Johnny and Ben. I just love their their fighting brother relationship. The Tim story. Ben Ben uh, Ben Grimm and, and mm-hmm. Johnny Storm was perfect. Like Chris Evans and Michael Chiklis did such a great job being brothers to each other sure. and, and making fun of each other, picking on each other. Like there's there's so much comedy to be mined from from those two. And I'm not saying they're just wacky sidekicks. I just think there's a lot of fun to be had with the two of them and their personality types. Uh, ben being this like loving, supportive friend of Reed's. Uh, you know, with Susie, you're like a little sister to me. And, and, and making him Jewish, of course, that he... Sure. Uh, yeah. What if... We, we would... If we, if we invoke him, if we invoke Doom, we kind of, we're kind of obligated to show him. So I'm, I'm going to put this out there. Uh, oh, you're no, not even actually, thinking about what I was talking about, are you? No, I was. <laughs> okay. I was. It, uh, 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 I'm, I'm ma- making... So we spent so much time on Reed because... What that is is that's the external, literal, literal spatial movement of our story. How do right. they get to where they're going? How do they get out? Right. Um, and now we're going to deal with sort of the, the internal conflict and stuff. Mm-hmm. And how do, how do you make Sue the leader but Reed still the one sort of driving that motion? Right. Um, I think, and, and it, it plays into their, the neglectful husband and the, the, the marital problems and the, and the family friction. Mm-hmm. Um, Sue keeps tr- like like she keeps trying like hey, Reed, we need to work together to do this. We need to. Co- I was gonna say, I was gonna say Doom, but actually we already set up what it should be. Is uh, Sue Sue should be saying hey, we need to reach out to Stark. We need to we need to contact Howard. Mm-hmm. We need to contact Howard so he can reopen the portal. So we need to do this and read yeah. read just kind of keeps mm. he's so myopic mm. and focused he's like no 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 there's there's this other signal we can we can do this we can do this i can do this we can do this mm. um and she, like right so then because he's so myopically focused here he's almost not seeing the other dangers of the the negiverse i know uh 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 or the the negative negative realm the ne- negative dimension the negative zone negative zone mm-hmm. zone I mean, I'll, I'll never remember that <laughs> um it's an because i know universe. initially you said he uh, uh he said oh there's going to be everything's going to be standing in our way to get out of here that may be true so maybe that's why he's so focused on quickly moving that way but sue's the one who's actually assessing the dangers and figuring this stuff out right um but the uh, uh the idea that she wants to move on the practical um plan of why don't we look back the way we came? We should have had a tether, and we didn't. Yeah. So why don't we just look for for that? Like Howard Stark is gonna be there waiting for us. But my mic. Uh, right. What do, you, what but, do you What do you think of? Uh, uh, basically, I was, I was trying to think of like how, because uh, because I like the idea of Sue being, an uh, 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 an, an equivalent to Reed, mm. right? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, she's a scientist in her own right. Mm-hmm. Uh, She's just more pragmatic. She's yeah. just much more tangible, like right in front of us. Let's do let's do the real yeah. like the act. Like this is what can be done. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh no, I need to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. But where, whereas Reed's all like 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 he freaks out when he sees the dead four, and then he's like, oh, what's this technology? It must not have been us because I don't have this. And then he uses that to talk and like like he he cobbles together new like like new devices from the dead versions of oh, like themselves that, that, of the other of remnants the other, that they find yeah. they find like the quad jet and whatnot this is what i suggest i like where you're going with this but what i would what i would do is it's less of this frustration and more of this like reed's gonna read and what we what i know sure. about reed what i know about my husband is that as long as we point him in the right direction he's gonna make sure we're okay like he's gonna take care of us sure but he's okay he doesn't know what direction to go in so we'll just like it's it's less of this. I never want. I don't want Sue to be, like, just automatically frustrated with him. Like, there at and, and contentious. Yeah, it's more of like she she loves this man because at his heart he wants to fix the world and he wants to he wants to he's so curious and he wants to explore and she she loves that about him. But she also knows how lost he gets in his own head. So she can be the guiding the eyes. She can be the the push forward and. Eventually, that can reach a point of like, Reed, just listen to me, please. 
like okay. and, and uh, Ra- uh, rather than being where it starts <laughs> exactly yeah like that that it's Ben and Johnny that could have like Ben can can talk to his buddy because they were kids together but sure. you know Ben's gonna be the first one to admit once he started reading calculus in second grade we stopped being equals let me tell you <laughs> like I, I'll protect anyone who's trying to mess with my friend yeah. like Ben was his bodyguard but he could never intellectually match Reed and and Johnny is just is is this hot shot cool guy there for the thrill he's maverick baby and he's got his own skill set but it's sue and reed understand each other on such a like a, a very nuanced level of its love and and while i like your idea that sue is like dude why don't we just do this and reed's like no 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 i think this i'm just suggesting that if there is that conflict it is not it's not coming from a place of aggression immediately I was on board, mm-hmm. and the thing is... Oh, no, I lost you. <laughs> yeah, you did. Because, uh, in general, I agree. That should sort of be the status quo of that family. Mm-hmm. Um, but we need... We can't have them be... We can't have them start at that status quo. Well... We, we need... Don't we need to create the conflict for them y- to overcome? Yes, yes. Reminding, uh, just a reminder, the way we're starting this out, they've been doing this for how many years? How many, a decade even? Maybe, that's probably too long. Five, six years they've been yeah. the Fantastic Four exploring these realms. Sue's on the phone call with the with the White House over here. Reed mm-hmm. is talking to Howard Stark over here. Like, they have, uh, they, they have a status quo that they're very comfortable with. So when Reed throws them into the negative zone and they get lost... The, the first moment of fresh of real frustration of like you have got to be shitting me. How long has this been this way? You're telling me we can't call Howard because every time you leave the building, everything shuts down. No, no. When I leave reality, everything shuts down. <laughs> like the that you can't keep secrets from us, Reed. Seriously, sure. like that. There, there's. Do you the, think the, there's there's something? Because uh, uh, I I like what you said. Rather yeah. than her. Rather than her, uh, she can she can be the one uh, liaisoning with governments and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I think it would also like when Howard shows up, it's not just hey Reed, hey Howard. It, mm-hmm. It's literally Howard has to talk to Sue first. Like, yes. yeah. how's he doing today? Uh, uh, he's he's got he's got he's got something. Uh, he's got a a a. A, a sliver of attention for you yeah, today. He has six whiteboards uh, uh, operating today as like, opposed to the regular 10. Oh, do, okay. Would you want to go so far as to, like, when they're there, like, to do almost, like, the cliche, the husband doesn't want to ask for directions kind of thing? Y- yeah. And, like, even even to the point that he might admit some sort of uh, uh, suspicious jealousy of, you're, you're always with Stark, you two are always off talking. She's like, that's because you are never there to talk to. To, like like to, to him or me or anyone. You're always in your lab doing when this we, or that. Yeah, when that. I'm in my lab for you. We, we should build to that. Okay. When, when that finally erupts and all those confessions, when the confessions between the two of them come out, that's within canon as well, that they, they often will separate and come back together because they mm-hmm. do love each other ultimately. Uh, yeah. The, the, yeah. Why, why do you want to keep calling Howard? What? <laughs> What do you mean? What do I want to keep going? like having that? Like, Reed, are you jealous? I've been we have been married for twenty yeah. years. Yeah. Uh, yes, I think yes. Certainly, we need the conflict, and I think the conflict comes from Reed withholding information mm-hmm. willingly. Like, mm-hmm. well, when I leave the dimension, everything shuts down. What? <laughs> That's stupid. No, no. What if I get lost? Then no one can use my technology. Right. We got lost, and now no one can use your technology. Uh, but also that he he doesn't tell them things because, like, oh, you wouldn't understand. Like, don't talk to me like I'm stupid. You know we've been doing this long enough. I understand more than you will mm-hmm. give us credit for. Even Johnny understands more than you give him credit for. It's true. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think the, the Reed and Sue relationship being the core of the the drama I just never want it to be the I'm leaving you for Namor level. Sure. Of, of, I don't like that when they do that with those two. Yeah. Uh, with Reed I do. Two. I do want them to be the type. When, when we do get back to for Fantastic Four 2 yeah. or, or however else they, they exist into the, the MCU, we've met Namor. Um, I don't necessarily want I don't want her to leave Richards, mm-hmm. but I, I like the idea that Namor has does have a thing for Sue. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. 
I, I just want that to be established somehow. Yes. <laughs> I, initially, before Namor was existed in the MCU through Wakanda Forever, I had once upon a time had a suggestion of him being the <clears throat> the surprise villain. Sure. I was like, oh, he's just the guy from Atlantis that I'm liaisoning with. Oops, guess what? Who's attacking New York? Mm-hmm. But that's that's a world we'll never see. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think the drama between the two, Reed withholding information, kind of uh, Sue taking charge and trying to have practical solutions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I think that all works to create drama. Johnny and Ben, however, like what's is Ben blindly supportive here? Is Johnny pissed off like what what would you like to do with those two characters other than my suggestion of they have fun i find each other i i sorry i just my mind started quickly spi- thinking about namor and, and how namor works in the mcu it started spiraling into just sort of the logic of of powers and stuff and what if richards uh uh one of the things he's what if and it would just be covered i guess in that in that uh, 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 opening the in first that opening act, yeah. uh, montage thing where we're like the the Fantastic Four did this and that like what if what if it all what if their powers actually do they don't just come from cosmic rays that they were exposed to it came from Richards researching vibranium vibranium right mm. was the cause of of uh, 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 these Atlanteans, things yeah Atlanteans well what is the property of vibranium that makes it that way? And how and where did it come from? <laughs> sure. And uh, uh, he blew up vibranium in a lab and so, gave them their powers. Well, no, like, like he could have gone to space or uh, in, in one way or another. Uh, uh, but ultimately, like that, like it was dis- whatever, whatever energy it is that gives vibranium its, its power that then leaches into plants. Mm-hmm. Um, he was, he, managed to distill it it is that it is that it essentially cosmic radiation of whatever kind yeah. but it's it's focused in whatever way that that's a, what a nerdy little side thing <laughs> that just a, occurred to me to tie it into into all that because the mcu seems to be moving in the direction where powers are caused by you're either an alien or uh it's vibranium or super serum or mutants. which is likely derived from Vibranium plants. Uh, sorry, it, uh, well, and then mutations probably come from vibranium. Uh, whatever. Is vibranium their adamantium? <laughs> uh, no, adamantium is a different metal. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, okay, I think uh, Johnny. Okay, here's a, here's a here's a little twist on the Fantastic Four. A lot of their wealth comes from creating patents on technology that they release to mm-hmm. the public. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a twist on this that. Maybe that's where that some of their funding comes from, sure, whatever. I'd like to think that Johnny is savvy enough to sell the image of of them. That mm. I, you said making them sort of like pseudo famous, but uh, one of the one of the best stories I read was it was it was kind of a relaunch of the Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was sort of a soft reboot. They 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 were still what they were, but the the book was being redone, and in it. Reed explained the whole, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying, uh, I can't fix my family, right? I can't, I can't make Ben a person again. I've, I've, I marred him and I've done all these things to the people I care about most. So I'm trying to make the world love them for, for who and what they are. Yeah. So it's Richards that like makes sure that they get in the news and stuff like that and, mm-hmm. and, and they get to be famous and Johnny can go out and, and be the hot hey, shot playboy kind of yeah. kind of guy and and everyone uh, uh, does all that and, and, and I loved that book if you want to change things around kind of okay I know you're trying to give agency uh, to their situation to each of the characters yeah I don't I don't know how much I'm, I'm on board with uh, I, 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 you're, you're kind of right in that. What else does Johnny do? <laughs> um, not that you said that. I assumed <laughs> that's what you were thinking. Well, pointing them at the the creatures and weird soldiers that say say one of the Fantastic Four came through with a bunch of Herbie or Ultron bots that thing and Johnny have to kick the shit out of in the midst of one of their uh, mm. like getting like the legs of their journey. Uh, yes, yeah, certainly utilizing Thing and Johnny as the muscle of this story and punch, punch, shoot, shoot, all the explosions and whatnot. Uh, just giving them a little bit of extra stuff to do. Like I suggested, Ben was engaged to Alicia Masters before they got lost in the negative zone. He's going to mm-hmm. have himself a Steve Rogers. He's going to come out and be like, what do you mean it's 40 years later? Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. Let me show you. Uh, 
how dare you? <laughs> it, that didn't even occur to me that you were setting that up. Oh, poor. Well, I mean, I literally just pitched it right now. Yeah. So, um, or Johnny being sort of the savvy public relations. Like maybe he's not going out there doing photo shoots, but he, he knows how to talk to the, the, the late night show host and the news and the paper and whatnot in the 60s. So he's got a whole new, uh, he's, got the, he's got social media to look forward to when he comes out on the other side. Uh, just giving him a little bit of something. Like his existence isn't, I set myself on fire and I punch things. I'm giving him like sure. the playboy, the flandering playboy persona. And sure. he, making him in charge of PR, he's the good looking face of the Fantastic Four. Hey, trust me, Ben, they're not going to make you the face of us. <laughs> well, yeah, rock face, get it? Hmm. Hey, people love these beautiful blue eyes, hothead. Matchstick. Ah, oh, damn it, I keep hitting the thing behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it, uh, I don't. I don't have any anything counter to that, and I yeah. don't have any good reason for saying no. Mm-hmm. It's um, just to give them, give them a little bit something, and I actually have. One it doesn't give them anything in the negative zone, or yeah. so. What am I? I, I, I don't know what I'm <laughs> waffling they, about. They all want to get out, but I, I I do have an idea. Okay, and I don't know if you're gonna like it. Okay, but I have I have one more idea for this this whole story. But before we get to it. Let's just let's just sort of solidify what we have here. If we open up our our movie in the '60s, '70s, whatever, they are the Fantastic Four. They they travel to different pocket universes and dimensions through portals in Reed's lab, and then they come home to the Baxter Building in New York City, and they they go out on the streets. Hey, Ben Grimm! Like they they're fully established. They understand their powers. Reed, with his fascination with the Negative Zone, pulls them on another adventure. Hey, just another adventure, babe. I'll be back when I when I, when I'm back. You know, don't miss me too much. <laughs> Come on, Johnny. They go in there. Something goes wrong. Seals the portal. Shuts off all the tech. They are lost in space. Mm-hmm. They have to travel this space for the majority of the movie to lo and behold, like, punching and fighting things along the way. Ultron bots, yep. creatures, what have you. They get to the portal. It opens up. Surprise! Evil Reed Richards. Now they have to stop him from going into their universe. Mm-hmm. Fight, fight, fight. Save the day. Out the other side. Seal the negative zone. Oops, we're in 2023 or 2025 or what have you. Mm-hmm. That's the movie, right? Okay. Is there? Did I miss anything? I don't think so. Okay. I think there's a great. I think that's awesome. I think that that's fun. It's adventurous. It checks off the exploration. It's uh, we get to play with their relationships. Plain simple. Here we go. What will set this apart? From Quantum Mania, from Loki, what what do you envision for this movie that gives it a unique quality? I, I'm challenging you right now. I'm not yeah. setting you up for okay. anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally I'm, asking I'm, you. I'm, I'm giving you suspicious yeah, eyes. Yeah, you know, like the suspicion on Jim's <laughs> face right now, people. I'm curious how, if the goal of this, of introducing them, of make, of trying to get the public at large to not only fall in love with these characters but fall in love with the MCU again. What unique quality of this is there in this movie? That like how you see, you see what I'm asking, right? I think so. What sets this apart? What makes this such a special film? Family. <laughs> well, I, 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 no, because family is the theme of so many of these movies. <laughs> um, I I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna make a suggestion, and I don't know if you're gonna like it. Okay. Okay. It's claymation. The no. whole thing. <laughs> The POV character, who is the perspective? No, I'm out. I'm, uh, who is nope. the perspective? I'm out. I'm come out. I'm on, out. I'm out. Let me come on. I don't know where you're going. I just, I, it, they did it with Hellboy, and I hated it. <laughs> what did they do with Hellboy? Uh, I love Guillermo del Toro, but they introduced a whole new character to be the point of view character. No, no. Okay, yes, it, I'm not introducing a whole new character oh, okay. to be the point of view character. Oh, I'm ex- oh. introducing an existing character to be the point of view character. Whose perspective can we do this whole movie from? That will be absolutely, entirely unique to the MCU. A ten-year-old Franklin Richards. This is my family. This is the adventure we've been on. So he's been. This is a story he's been telling this whole time. So now, we can have so much fun with a child's perspective of what these characters can and do. Now, I, I, are I don't you familiar know, I, with like like the the whole. Are you familiar with the Franklin Richards comic? Uh, 
the the uh, dream, dreamers or dream, dream? No, it's a Franklin Richards, son of a genius. No, I'm not. Okay, so it's done in a Calvin and Hobbes, Scotty Young style. Okay, where it's it's all the adventures of the Fantastic Four through this very cartoonish, very animated Franklin Richards and his sidekick Herbie the Robot. Now, I'm not saying we go full on Looney Tunes on this, but presenting this like. When Michael Pena does the recaps in yeah. Ant-Man 1 and 2, yeah. how gold is that? It's, see, yeah. it, it's really it's, good. It's his heightened perspective of what reality is. Michael Pena, the, the reason Quantum Mania is not an A-plus movie is because Luis wasn't in the movie side by side with Mike Douglas having the adventure. <laughs> that movie would have jumped to the top of my MCU list if that had happened. Having a POV character that perceives things very silly... And very innocently, I there there might be something to this. I'm pitching it. I'm not saying I love it. I'm I'm throwing it on the table. I know how you don't like Attic Kid. Uh, well, so yeah, I'm not big on Attic Kid. Well, but a part of one of one of the demands was to include Franklin and, and uh, Valeria. Val- Val- Valeria. Valeria. Yeah. Um. Hmm. And we haven't done that unless we do a fast forward in the negative zone, where they're both born there and they have to they we like do a uh like a whole uh uh he, what, what was he, it not robinson crusoe fa- family swiss family robinson. swiss family robinson this, this but is my with the fantastic su- four this is my suggestion <laughs> which is which is really what um uh uh lost in space what's her name did in uh in quantum mania right except it was just her yeah Jan- uh, janet janet yeah. janet yeah if franklin exists from the beginning and they go in ben and Johnny, Sue, like, and obviously Reed, they have to look out for this kid. This is a 10-year-old kid on an adventure with them and keeping... Now it's really lost in space. Yeah, and that's fine. You evoked lost in space an hour ago. I did. Um, and another heartfelt moment of, like, why? why? Like, we need to do this. We need to get through here. Like, if Sue's pregnant, like, if that's a revelation within the movie of, like, why it's so important that they get through this... Like, if it's something that she was waiting to tell him. If at the beginning of the movie, it's like, Reed, finish up what you're doing. We have dinner tonight. Reed, hey, hey, Franklin, tonight uh, we're going to have dinner with your dad. Like, if that's planned at the very beginning, when we get to our sort of the lowest point in the story, when Reed and Sue are like, when she's finally confronting him about his, his nature, to be like, we have to get out of here. We have a family, and we have more family coming, and we have to, and that adds to the theme that you suggested, which was family, it and is. it adds to descendants and legacies, it does. which goes to your stinger, and and gives this powerful moment of Reed to literally set everything aside to see what's truly important to him, which is his wife, his brother, his brother-in-law, I called Ben his yeah. brother, and his, chi- his son and his coming child. It's like, what have I been doing? This is the most important thing. And then it also, also goes to what I love so much about The Incredibles. So I'm suggesting Franklin Richards not only be in this movie, but that we perceive the movie through his eyes. Here's, here's my uh, uh, pro- can, problem okay. with it, uh, and it, it's actually a reason I don't. I also don't want to include Doom, and like Doom gets his powers from there. Although I guess if that's all before the movie and and, and montage slash just exposition, technically Doom could get his powers there as well. But. Um, it's not the Fantastic Four if there's more than the four of them. <laughs> well, they were the Fantastic Four before Franklin came along. This is my mom and dad. They've been, they were in a group called the Fantastic Four. Yeah. That came along. Kind of threw things off. Johnny's always saying we're the Fantastic Five, but it doesn't feel the same. I'm not really a superhero like them. We're not superheroes, kid. We're explorers. Yeah, but they're superheroes to me. Uh, no. Uh, I'm that... If you were to somehow frame it as it's a story being told a la The Princess Bride, Mm -hmm. I might be able to get on board that. But doing the movie from the perspective of a 10-year-old as appropriate to how the movies are, the the audience, the the, the movie's truly marketed toward Mm -hmm. uh, the four-quadrant marketing. (laughs) Um, I wasn't sure you'd like it. I know you don't like kids. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's uh, it's it's not uh, to have the the I I'm not fully on board with this story either because sure. I can look at something like the Adam Project, which came out on Netflix 2023, mm-hmm. and it's it is 
uh, Last Starfighter, uh, My Dad from the Future, who's actually me, uh, Zathura kind of stuff. Like, it's, it's a little hokey, and you, there's such a fine balance in having a kid be your POV character in what is essentially an adult's movie. And and it's well, and, and I get like by making him the point of view, like it's not, it's not an adult movie, not it, anymore. It's yeah, yeah. it's it's a it's a movie for for ten year olds, right? And, and um, people and will the hate movies that. are are meant to appeal to ten year olds, but they're not. I don't think they're meant to be for ten year olds, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes um, sense. And that's that's why I'm not. I am also I mean, not fully on board with it. It also becomes right. Like I I start thinking like oh so it's a. It's a high budget version of Mom and Dad Save the the Universe. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I don't I didn't the the reason I suggested it the the, the and I'm um, sorry uh, the Franklin Richards Son of a Genius comic is great. It's so silly. It's like Plastic Man from DC, uh, where it's just very mm-hmm. animated. And sure. Very the first the first issue of the comic. Franklin inadvertently he asks his dad about evolution for a school project and he accidentally turns Reed into a monkey and so the whole <laughs> adventure is trying to capture his dad to turn him back into a human before mm. mom gets home ah. it's that sort of like absolute cookies. that would make that would make a great Disney plus TV show yes it would it would um, especially animated yeah um, so the yeah I, I I don't think I think what we came up with here is a what great if, Fantastic Four adventure. Because we were asked to include the kids. I, I actually do like um, like your whole, oh, Sue, Sue confesses she's pregnant. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, and that's, that's a reason they got to get back. Like, I'm, I am, I'm good with that, actually. Okay. But having, um, having Franklin having there Franklin and not along, the POV character. Uh, having Fra- Franklin along, I'm... I'm warming up to, uh, but not he, not the POV character. But again, that makes them the Fantastic Five. <laughs> Even if he doesn't have powers, he's still there with them. Um, unless we go and we bring more than just them. Like, what if Reed, thinking he's doing a grand thing, like like he know? Oh, I know I've been I know I've been neglectful. So I am inviting everyone. To bring, like, right, like he tells Thing to bring, bring Alicia. Alicia. Yeah. And uh, Johnny brings a couple girls with, oh, with, God. and like, like, like he's bring, bring everyone. This is the setup to a horror movie. And, and <laughs> like, like, in, in the whole concept, like, he's like, oh, we're going to have a picnic. We're going to have a picnic on another world. Oh. And they're like, oh, that sounds great because they'll, we'll have seen those worlds. So they'll have, an, like, the audience will have an idea of what they're all thinking they're going to go do like this is going to be a fun doctor who adventure and then he takes them to the negative zone <laughs> no and like uh, uh, i and don't no no i i cuz cuz then they, idea, they but... remain the fantastic four and then they have bystanders they have family that they're also concerned about protecting who aren't uh, 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 the superheroes. If your concern truly is that having five characters breaks the movie for you, then she can just be pregnant no. with. She can just be pregnant with Franklin, and and we can introduce Franklin down the road, and v- uh, Valeria can come in after. If that's truly your concern, it's it's, it's not. Fine. It's not. I don't have any interest in adding. Okay. Superfluous. I can. I can. Yeah. I can overcome that. I can overcome that. Fine. Fantastic Four plus a kid. Um, <laughs> That's the name of the movie. So now the kid's there. Now the kid's in the movie. Yeah. We have to do one of two things. Well, or, uh, we have to do something. We need to justify why he's there. Making him the point of view would have done that. I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. Now he's just... A fragile lamp that's in danger. He's he's RoboCop's kid. <laughs> he's uh, he's he's cute lamp theory. Yeah. <laughs> if you yeah. replace him with the cute lamp, yeah. So if he's not the POV character, he doesn't belong there. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine, and I'm okay with that because then we can still have the revelation of I'm pregnant, and and having Reed like wake up to what's most important, and get us to the climax of the movie. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Okay. Um, uh, the only alternative I would say is that if he if Franklin exists but he gets left behind, that doesn't work because how many years, how many decades go by before they come yeah. back? So yeah, take Franklin off the table. Six. He's in utero. Six, six decades. Six decades. <laughs> um, yeah, 
I'm fine. I, I put it out there just to see if it would stick. Well, it did not. I mean, it is a part of one of the demands is that we have. It, it technically was not. Our, was if it? we go off a of line on loaners' demands, uh, Franklin and Valerie were not in it. Um, oh, came, I thought they were. No, that came from. Hey, you know, let me just blow through the demands real quick. Okay. I want to remind us. So this is from line on loaner. Uh, uh, two years, blah, blah, plenty of uh, debate. Uh, how does it fit into the MCU? Consider the current movie released and uh, everything that's coming before. Also give Gambit a cameo. It's clobbering time. Uh, from Chris, uh, it would be wild if the Fantastic Four came from another Earth in the multiverse and we don't have to go through the origin story. They've been chasing Doctor Doom through the multiverse and Doom has set up shop in the MCU because this Earth doesn't have a Fantastic Four. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, uh, that was a thought as well um, that I didn't air, so I just sound like I'm stealing someone else's <laughs> that, idea. That was Chris's idea. It was Chris's idea. You're not idea. Chris. No, I'm not. Uh, from Dan, uh, they need to be at the center of the MCU. They need to be the heart that connects everything. The Fantastic Four Jerby of Kirby's creation started the MCU, and I hope that they give him the respect they deserve. I want to see Jack Kirby's name on the screen properly credited as creator. I'll even settle for co-creator since the Stanley estate would almost definitely sue if Stan's name isn't on anything Marvel. There's a documentary about this. Look into mm. it. Jack Kirby, poor guy. Like, one of the all-time gods of of act. every comic you know mm-hmm. um, and st- what Stanley and his relationship was like. Uh, Darren, focus on them as a family and as explorers. Tony, a lot of people want to see The Incredibles again, uh, practical sets. Damon, write them as a team of scientists from the 70s stuck in the quantum realm. Uh, time dilation. Or they could just be some student. Oh, I didn't see this. Or they could just be some students from Tony's greenlit barf project oh, <laughs> from uh, Civil War. Yeah. Uh, Brian, I'm sticking with the hope that they are, went to the negative zone, haven't been back since the 70s. Uh, Doc, um, New York uh, back running to fight villains, uh, make it colorful. Mm-hmm. Doctor Doom is still alive through magic and technology, and is harbored a grudge against Reed and literally decades of isolation in his country, quietly plotting and building Doombots. Ooh, Doombots. That's how we sneak in a Doom uh, reference is in the negative zone. Maybe they fight a Doombot. I, had, I just had another idea. We do put Doom in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, we mention him like... like Maybe we even show him. Maybe that's that's one of the uh, the the adventures that that one or more of them are coming back from, uh, having dealt with him, right? Mm-hmm. And he does have magic and technology. One of the reasons the world forgets about the Fantastic Four when they come back is because in the decades since, Doom has made sure the world has forgotten about them with magic. Ooh, all right. That makes Doom quite old, though. Found but him. not with magic. And not with magic. <laughs> He's the Sorcerer Supreme. <laughs> Doom literally erasing them is yeah. why the people don't remember them. Yeah. It's not bad. I don't mind that. And that's also why why uh, uh, Strange is the only one who seems to, to remember them. I'm not affected by magic. <laughs> um, so there you go. I, I, if, what we've latched on to breaking this into three X. We see him in the seventies. We lose him in space for most of the movie ultimate climax of them fighting. Let's go back to this evil versions of all four. Or do you like my pitch of evil Reed with three others? I, I like, I like the evil versions of all four. Okay. Um, I think because, so I know, I know it's, it's cliche at this point, but I think we can do some interesting things with that because, uh, uh, right. So zombie, zombie, fantastic four show up. Um, and uh, uh, Zombie Richards, st- uh, uh, I'm imagining he actually starts or uh, uh, somehow getting other portals to open and other Fantastic Fours are coming through and they either aren't able to give him what he wants or he takes what he wants from them and then kills them slash feeds them to the rest of his if family. If you didn't get enough of Reed Richards getting spaghettied in Multiverse of Madness, yeah. you're about to get yeah. ten more. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to, they don't all have to be the same four power sets. They could be variations of them. Mm-hmm. Like it'd be kind of oh. neat seeing instead of a, 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 a fire Johnny, he's an ice Johnny. If you're good, if uh, that's or, cool, but yeah. uh, in addition yeah, yeah. to that, let's get a Tatiana Maslany cameo in here because She-Hulk has been a member of the Fantastic Four. So uh, I was thinking about that. Do we want to, because ultimately she would, like we'd kill She-Hulk. 
or have a zombie version of She-Hulk? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm suggesting. We Zom- can do that, Zombie yeah. She-Hulk. Yeah. Instead of, okay, fine. Fantastic Four, instead of Thing, make it Zombie She-Hulk. So then Ben Grimm versus sure, She-Hulk. Sure, because the, uh, I'm trying to remember how the, the, the zombie, not that we have to stick to the zombie verse. Mm-hmm. So in the zombie verse, it was very cool that, that Richards basically uh, uh, essentially fell in love with the zombie virus and was like, this is the next step in evolution. And he infected his family. None of them were even bit. Yeah. Uh, and that's how they all got infected, uh, transformed. Yeah. Um, Greg Land's the but original artist. The, that, by the, the reason there. the reason I uh, I was saying to do a zombie version of of that original four is because we can mirror the problems that Reed needs to overcome here, like realizing, oh no, family is the mm. the important way to go, because Zombie Richards is not doing that. He's like like he's a, he's essentially turned them into mindless. Like they might even like like a Zombie Sue might be like Reed. Reed, we're monsters. We can't. We we, uh, we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be doing this. And he like just dismisses her and like like stretch slaps her away or something. This I, is I evil, Reed, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just making sure. <laughs> um, but like we we get to see like sort of the idea of this is what you will become if you continue to be so uh, myopic and, yeah, and arrogant. Yeah. yeah, if you if you don't put your ego away, this is your future, pal. Yeah, I and mean, that's what's being presented to him. That said, sure, yeah. and, and that's why I think it's important to have all all four of them okay. there. Or or if it because th- that lesson to read maybe uh, uh, the, the relationship of the four or the relationships to read Johnny seems the least. That that feels uh, weird and callous to say that. Oh, my brother in law means the least to me. <laughs> But, like, replacing him with someone else, I feel, would be the easiest to do. If you replace Sue, that's, the, like, that's yeah, supposed right. to be his, yep. his anchor. Or maybe that ends up being the point, right? Like, because Sue's his anchor or thing. How is the, I don't know. They're all sort of his, his sort of touchstones. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they're gone, that does say something. But also by having them there and showing his neglect to them, I think, can be important and powerful. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I, I don't, Yeah. I wouldn't. No. I wouldn't be opening up other portals and sending in other Fantastic Four. I would just make it a four-on-four fight. Oh, I, I, I would. I would be. Do, I would. Uh, give, give me ten. I like. I granted. I do that with everything. <laughs> give me ten variations of all of them. I, I want to see them. Uh, uh, oh, the the other point there is so, Zombie Richards is doing that to feed, and and to to try to gain more power. But then our Richards is doing that to to get more help. Mm. And they're they're not going to be as powerful as our as our main four, um, and ultimately he's going to stop. Like e- either he's going to stop or they're going to stop responding because they're going to realize we're we're just dying. This is this is bad news. No, we're gonna we're or or we have all the variations of Richards. None of them are as brave. They're like no no we're sorry we're going to say no to this one. Reed, if he can finally break like if the negative zone finally opens and he has access back to his building and the building lights up in the dusty decades mm-hmm. that have come and it won't be revealed to the audience necessarily that decades have passed but when the portal opens and we got two doorways and the, the fight's happening between the spaces and he's trying to reach out to all the other reeds and they're like no we're no we're not coming um the, the reason i don't want this to escalate into a giant cg fight of 64 versus 64 Fantastic Four. <laughs> I want it to be much more personal. Four on four, it allows a much more practical finale as opposed to an end game CG battle. And that's why I'm saying no to other portals and other Fantastic Fours being introduced. That it should just be the four versus the four. Okay. I, I, that's just my argument for why no, I don't want to do it. And it's a decent argument. One of the big complaints is all these movies are just big CG fests and yeah. we want practical effects. Fantastic Four, in my opinion, is the wrong movie to want that with. <laughs> it just becomes more personal if it's, a, if it's a smaller battle. The stakes are massive. If we let these people get over here, then... Sure, which, which is, I think, a little bit why we need to show... I'd, I'd like because because we well the other reason for opening those portals and seeing the variations again leads to the ending of seeing the multiverse uh it could, it could also explain how and why they they get lost a bit in time mm. as well they're getting lost in space and time 
mm-hmm. uh, as, as they open portals, they, uh, uh, we see subtly that time is advancing. So sort of an interstellar situation. Yeah. And, and it can even be posited at some point that Reed, like one of Reed's concerns is I, I mathematically, the longer we're here, the, the more time is passed. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's how time works. No, yeah. I don't think you're understanding like, what like I'm we, saying. We've only been here a few days, but spatially we've moved here in Years. space here. Yeah. Uh, uh, th- there is, there, there's a, uh, uh, a correlation to time. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, that'd be interesting. It's the negative zone. One of the things they, they find out is time and space are flipped here. Mm-hmm. So the longer you spend here, the further you get from where you were. Hey, there but you the go. further you move here, the longer yeah. time changes. That's great. That's uh, a good, good, good bit of techno babble right there. You just uh, wrote some good dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, the other reason I want to see the other versions is I want our read to see not I, I think the zombie ones are the ultimate f- bad version mm-hmm. of, of it but seeing the other reads and and his and those families I, I think I, I'm okay with him seeing them I don't want them in the fight mm-hmm. I don't want him being pulled into port through portals and seeing all these different fantastic four getting glimpses of the alternate realities and and the alternate versions of this particularly the worlds that the the zombie richards has destroyed already i'm cool seeing that and glimpses okay i I guess maybe not as a final a final fight i'm not saying that's how it has to end like everyone attack right uh uh, fantastic four assemble (laughs) and that's not what no maybe is like like a second act kind of thing richards finds out a way and he does like I want this. I want this to happen. Okay. It's my hill. It can be a smaller hill, but it, uh, uh, he does. He gets three or four. It does again. Doesn't have to be sixty. It doesn't have to be dozens. Yeah. Uh, but he gets a handful of others to come in to help him. Like we're gonna do this. We're gonna we're gonna defeat that. We see the problem, and we're gonna we're gonna help defeat him. And he himself has has opened a portal or two here or there mm-hmm. to uh, to feed and and infect, and that's a problem in and of itself. Uh, <laughs> And they they die. That's like sort of a part of where the second act ends is Reed has realized he has just sent perfectly willing uh, 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 versions of him and his family to die. And, and so that's that's why he that's why going into act three, he doesn't seek more help. OK, he doesn't want more talking. people to die. Thank you. You've solved my <laughs> my narrative issue here. Uh, because I, 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 I understand, uh, uh, we don't want to read ex machina. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, the ending, but having it happen as, as like a midpoint, leading into their lowest point. Now we're talking. Now we've created some stakes in. I can't keep doing this. And it creates on screen a, a, a microcosm version of the answer of why don't heroes just call on the other heroes from other movies when things happen? Because they'll die. Yeah, because <laughs> they want. Well, I mean, granted, yes. Uh, uh, they're they're not wrong. If Hawkeye called Thor, Thor would not have died to Kingpin yeah. in the Christmas <laughs> special. But uh, 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 it's yeah they 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 don't want to risk um, uh, uh, their 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 own friends uh, or in this case uh, their their own uh, uh, mirror selves. So um, versions of themselves. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what? Uh, 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 I because. I feel like that's that's a fun, important thing, and they, they and they've traveled to other worlds, and and uh, uh, this whole thing does touch on the multiverse, where we see multiple versions of characters we know, mm-hmm. and like I feel like it's important to do that, and I I I don't want it doesn't again, I, I'm, I know I'm just saying the same thing here. It doesn't have to be how it ends. It doesn't have to be that third act. No, but, but it, get us to the low point. This is a great opportunity. But having it in there, yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree, um, but do our listeners agree? Yes. Okay, good. Wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wrap the episode up here. Yeah. I, we can keep talking. We'll go into bonus I, territory. I mean, I could repeat it all a third you, time. Do, do you want to do yeah, that? No. Did you only no, do that because I, I had to run and get the charger? Uh, only partially. <laughs> okay, we're going to wrap the episode up here. We'd love to know if we met your demand. We, didn't, we didn't get Gambit in there. Oh, hey, we're, we're peeking through multiverse <laughs> pockets here. Look, look over this window over here. What do you see? Raging Cajun, right? Oh, there, there. he is, and, and he looks up and he's like, "What's this about?" Thank you. And then in our Gambit movie, we we just have a random window open. Oh, what the heck was that? <laughs> <laughs> I I really appreciate that, Lon Lon here, that your head cannon for the MCU is our Gambit. That, yeah, that makes me happy. Yeah, that's a fun episode. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, did we did we meet the demands? That is up for you to decide. So uh, hit us up if you agree or disagree. If you think we missed something, really seriously, whatever. You can message us directly at studiodemandsit.com. If you'd like to go to the site formerly known as Twitter, I will still check messages there. Um, there's a couple of you who I've continued to have conversations with there. I'm still very annoyed by this whole X situation, but uh, you know, there it is. Uh, <laughs> you can find us on Instagram as well. If you're not already, you can subscribe to us on any of the podcast uh, apps of your choice. And if you feel like giving us a little review, you can do that right in your app. And it helps us get out there into the algorithms. You can also find us on YouTube and TikTok, where we are posting video content this year, including material not heard here on the show. Uh, TikTok, the videos, we, we have such a blast with those. Yes. Uh, those are going to be going up on YouTube as well very soon. So if you don't have the TikTok app, don't you worry your pretty little heads. Oh, however, if you do go over to studiodemandsit.com, the TikToks are now right on the homepage. So there you, you don't even have to go to the app. You can watch them right there. You can find me on the socials at TC's Big Head. You can find Jim at, I don't know, Hunter. I don't know. He's where, somewhere either. out there in the negative zone. Yep. <laughs> uh, and if you didn't know this, we have a Patreon for a couple bucks a month. Whatever you find in your couch, you can get episodes early as well as extended double-length episodes and movie commentary tracks. Thank you to 6-5 Media for everything they do for us. This has been a very excellent season. We are now in the end game. Uh, <laughs> only four episodes left. But here's the thing. Ben Grimm. Clobber in time. Yeah. Here's the thing. We are going to put the poll up for the finale. The voting has begun. You can mm -hmm. now vote on what the finale will be. Jim and I have narrowed it down to, I think, six I think options. So. Uh, so get your voices heard. Uh, what do you want the finale to be? We, we don't quite know how we're going to do the finale yet mm -hmm. with the ongoing strikes, but we will figure something out. But yes, uh, we, we're going to have a conversation right now about whether or not this makes it on the finale list. But uh, yeah, get your voices out there. Uh, we've had very long and lengthy <laughs> debates uh, from our listeners in the comment section on Facebook where, uh, and Twitter or wherever you find the, the poll. So, yes, Get please. in there. Join the fight. Get fray. in there. Join the fight. That's all for the episode. I'm done rambling. Jim, do you have any more rambling to do? I am also done rambling. All we right. We are the done ramblings. We're the done ramblings. Great band name. All right. <laughs> we'll be back again very soon to improve the world of cinema. I'm TC. I am Jim. And this is a show ending. Boom. There. All the time. We did it. Overlords. Overlords. <laughs>